What's up, guys? Only Easy Blade. Man, team killing. Only thing I'm not digging about the uh, competitive playlist on the Black Ops. And I know you guys are going, hey, Blaine, um, what the hell? Why are you playing Black Ops? I thought you didn't like Black Ops. I don't know. Um, I wanted to get back into Black Ops because the map pack was coming out. And uh, the competitive playlist. What's up, Fwiz? He uh, he helped orchestrate this. A lot of people were not liking the idea of the competitive playlist. A lot of people were upset. But don't be upset because they were saying fix other parts of the game. But I find enjoyment out of it, and that's the key, man. Like uh, earlier in the week, um, I had posted, you know, I'm just I'm burnt out on black. I'm burnt out on Call of Duty in general, and and this and that. But at the same time, it's just like I. I will always love Call of Duty, and I'm loving the the new playlist. It really is fun. Like uh, the ability to not the main thing for me is not to have the motion sensors and the equipment, and it makes search and destroy really really fun. I don't know. I just I just I don't like it. I just like it. And um, uh, playing with onslaught and that guy who camps and that first clip that I showed you, where uh, Jeff accidentally team killed me. He, uh, the reaction videos of that is something that he uploaded right before I did this, and I know you guys are like, Blade, you gotta come out with these chill Sunday commentaries earlier, and I get it, I understand what you're saying, man, but like, I need to be chill, I need to be relaxing on a Sunday, and I was, but then on the news, Osama Bin Laden died, and that was a whole big thing, so I'm reading the Twitter rape, and, and everyone, you know, all the stupid jokes, um, like it's so funny because like whenever like big events like this happen, you it's so weird that what we're uh, we automatically think of like what I think of is all the stupid jokes about how Osama bin Laden's a camper, uh, how he really didn't die because he had a second chance, uh, Waldo won, Osama bin Laden zero, shit like that. It's just like <sighs> you you just you just kind of prepare for the the stupidness. <laughs> Ooh, sit down. And then, oh, get tomahawked. Oh, he didn't want to get tomahawked. He had tomahawk repellent. And uh, kind of sound horror with this guy a little bit. Sit down. And then take this person out. In the competitive play of this, man, there's only four people on each team. Which I think is really, really cool. I, I like that. I like how it switches sides. Um, but what I was saying, though, man, about uh, getting prepared to hear all the stupid jokes. is just like, that's what we have to deal with. But, like, honestly, man, like... Osama bin, I, I never, you never really want to celebrate anybody's death, but like Osama bin Laden uh, dying was kind of a, not a metaphor, but like uh, kind of like the little cherry on top of the awesome, awesome town weekend week I, I had, you know, and it's just like, man, uh, my life's good, my health's good, the video game input that I'm taking is good, everything's beautiful, you know, and like, I think having that makes me excited to what, what's going to be happening this week with the videos and now it's sunny out so I know that I got to make sure that I divvy my time between video games and going out and there's uh, for all you people old enough to drive there's nothing better than like a sunny day driving your car rolling the windows down smelling that little tire shine and just you know what I mean you know when you drive by and you know that just that feeling of a pretty lady getting skewered by my penis, <laughs> uh, no, the feeling of a pretty lady, like when she's like walking to a store or whatever, and she, she sees my car, and she looks over, and she just has this look like, hey, who are you, and I'm not saying that she wouldn't look at me without the car, but I'm just saying, just, just like, just the presence of, she knows that I'm here, and that guy who camps, we're spectating him, and he's having fun, and that's why I, li I like playing with Jeff, man, because Jeff and I are, like, on the same page um, with the YouTube stuff, with Call of Duty. Um, like, we just, we just, we vibe, we get, we, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's just a good thing. Like, it's better to keep yourself surrounded by, by people that are good, that you know are, are, are good people, you know what I mean? And so, like, uh, recently on my Twitter, I unfollowed everybody that... I didn't want to hear anymore, and it's just weird. Do you you notice how we kind of always um, surround ourselves with lots of negative things, and it's just like you don't have to. You know what I mean? Like with oh, 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 oh elite sniper, let's spectate that. 
I like how he gets the random tomahawk. He doesn't get the random tomahawk. But then he makes his teammates sit down trying to kill me. And then he hits that reload. And then he comes around here. And it makes me it take a seat. <laughs> but um, like I unfollowed everybody that I wasn't, I just didn't like listening to. And I actually went on my YouTube and unsubscribed from people that I wasn't digging what they're doing, man. So it's just like surround yourself with, with good things and uh, and everything and just doing doing the right thing. And I think you'll get rewarded for it. So um, it's not about uh, like a lot of people say that it's about acceleration or excelling. And I think it's about cruising. But I've worked hard to get to that point where I can just cruise on by and everything everything is going well, man. Like I'm really digging it and I'm just excited for the week. And uh hopefully some of that excitement I can just kind of whip my hair back and forth, throw a tomahawk, and maybe some of that excitement dandruff can drift onto you guys. And maybe you guys will have an awesome week. Sit down. Well that's the game, guys, and I wanted to add, kinda of add this little extra little clip. And it is a 14-second search and destroy round. Competitive. I thought it was pretty cool. There you go. I actually do it from everyone's point of view. Peace. And Buckley. Defend the objectives. Boy. Defend the objectives. I'm such a silly bastard. God damn. <laughs> uh, before we get... Hey, quiet on the set. By the way, when you watch Sunday Chill Commentaries, I never ask for likes or anything like that, but turn your cell phones off. I've learned that I, I've actually turned my cell phones off when I do a commentary. And, and you really should, because I'd be... No, I don't care. I don't care what you do. It's funny, but like, you know, light a candle. Turn the lights down low. Do what you do, but... Hope you guys enjoy this heartfelt Sunday Chill commentary. And uh, one thing I completely forgot is after you're done enjoying yourself, clean up. <laughs> and you can go over to uh, Chris Trout did a dual commentary with yours truly. And I think it turned out really good because we we just chatted. Like, you know what I mean? It was just two, two uh, people just chatting it up and uh, I think it was good because it wasn't like oh I'm gonna go to Chris's channel and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a lot of exposure or 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 and and I don't and Trout didn't come at me like I came to him about it. I thought it'd be cool you know and so uh, you get the basic idea that the dual com that I'm sending you well, I'm not sending you but like I'm letting you know that it's available is there uh, and it, it's just a good dual com good conversation between two people and we're not doing it and I think that the the reasons for doing it was because we thought it would be an entertaining fun happy time so hope you guys enjoy that now Sunday chill commentary why hello there only use me blade Sunday chill commentary I know that you didn't get one last week, and the week before that it was Mother's Day, and I had the dual, dual com with Mom, Mama Blade. Um, so, this game right here, some Call of Duty Black Ops, this is actually kind of old. Um, if you guys hadn't noticed, uh, I, uh, I'm basically going to burn out Call of Duty, whatever. Anyways, that's not what this is about. This is a time to relax, and I want to talk about people that... Are in love okay the the first week of someone being in love and how fucking annoying it is I let's say you're a single person okay and you're happy you're ha let's say your friend or whatever person's in love and that first week of them realizing that they're in love with another person and the other person is in love back with them and it's so fucking annoying it, it honestly is like it's a um, 
like I can kind of give you some examples of of annoying shit, like the constantly bubbly attitude, like walking around. Okay, I'm gonna stop. I was gonna think I was thinking about doing a whole commentary about that, about uh, being a single person and seeing someone else in love and kind of like not hating on it, but it is hating on it. It's a form of hating on it. It's so annoying. Um, basically, the way. That people act like that guy. What a you can't that was you just he just she saw me and shot me. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> Super fast motor um, THX. I was gonna do the whole commentary like that, uh, where I was just be talking about people that are in love, but uh, and then I was gonna flip it at the end and say it's me. But basically, um. I haven't played shit for video games in the last week, and uh, look at this interruption. So that interrupted Sunday Chill, but look how far back I like slammed back into time. I hopped in DeLorean and came back. Uh, basically, um, I'm googly-eyed, sprung, in love with uh, a female, not gay. <laughs> not saying if you're gay that's bad just it's not my you know I don't I don't like the penis I like uh, I like the vitamin V the vagina you know <laughs> uh, but no I, I met someone and she's amazing and um, like honestly the reason why it's sit down the reason why it's kind of affected my my sleep schedule is because uh, we can lay there and we can talk forever you know and uh <laughs> the reason why i'm talking about this is because honestly this is the only thing that's on my mind like you guys know that i'm a bouncer or whatever um like honestly like when i went into work on uh on saturday when i went to work last night it was a little bit of an issue um oh then i wanted to bring this up so you saw what just happened right through the tomahawk mist but through the ballistic knife and then when you see the the kill cam, you go, wow, what a camping douche. But you realize that I wasn't camping, so I don't know. Just food for thought. Just a little bit of Call of Duty for you. But back on the topic of hand. Um, time stops with her. It really does. And, uh, like, I'm not just thinking about fucking uh, with her. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's, it's more than that. And... Um, like honestly I don't want the time to end uh, when I, that I spend with her and I, I know it sounds sappy and I know that if I was a single person and I was listening to this it would be a thing of being like dude shut the fuck up no one cares and I get it and I really wanted to talk about something else I really would have preferred to talk some, about something else because like even though I do a lot of videos and I talk and relax and do whatever this is the only thing that's going through my mind this week is her. And the th crazy thing about it, she's absolutely, like, uh, like, physically and, like, the facial looks and everything of her, she's amazing. And, like, I feel like that she's, like, out of my league, you know? I really honestly do feel like that she's out of my league. Like, let's, and all, let's be realistic or whatever. I think I'm a good-looking dude, but, like, she's, like way finer whatever but like i don't even care about that like i i feel like there's like i know this is gonna sound super duper cheesy corny but i feel like there's like this uh this like uh soul connection i know it sounds so cheesy and it's, it's like some some notebook type shit but uh it, it is what it is man and like i i was i was i wanted to get you guys sunday chill commentary um super fast what uh whatever and uh, I really wanted to discuss something else. Uh, like on this this game, this game is old. Uh, and I was going to talk about how playing for YouTube games is is weird because sometimes you screw it up because you play this. And it's like no one cares. Like honestly, there's so much there's so much Call of Duty stuff. And also um, another thing is that uh, I feel really bad. Here's the thing: like I've always stressed the quantity. I mean the quality over quantity thing 
and the reason why, uh, like sometimes I'm just like kind of iffy on, on uploading these San Andreas things. Cause it's like, I think they're good, but they're not like great. And I, I really, ballistic knife. I really want to make sure that what I'm uploading is good. And I always stress that, but like I broke my own rule. Basically I had felt like I hadn't posted. I wanted to chat with you guys and I put up pretty much a shit video. Okay. And part of the reason for that was because like I thought of these videos. I thought of you guys, right? I thought of you guys as a group or you, the person that's watching this right now. I thought, man, I just need to get something to him real quick. Bam, here you go. And I, and I put together a lackluster video. And what that video was was the super fast mode commentary. I thought it would be a cool idea. I had a free-for-all that I got a lot of deaths in. And so I figured if I super fast mode, maybe you guys wouldn't notice or whatever. And uh, it was just how I was feeling at the time. There wasn't – I like this little standoff. This is people spectating. Uh, but you know what I mean, though? Like I – I and I, I feel like I cheated you guys, you know, and it was really really shitty. But I'm gonna be completely honest. The reason why I cheated you was because like I I wanted to dedicate. So oh, he made he took a seat. I wanted to dedicate more time to her. You know what I mean? And um, you know, it just it is what it is. And all all I can say is I'm sorry if you guys unsubbed. It doesn't actually it doesn't matter because you're not watching this, so that doesn't count. <laughs> But you know what I mean, though? Like, uh, it's a weird time, man. And I know it's only been a week. And I actually asked her about it because I was just like, is it okay if I talk about this in, in a commentary? Like, she knows about my video things or whatever. And she was like, yeah, that, that'd be awesome. I'd love to watch it. So, for you, my love, there you go. <laughs> um... But yeah, and like when I was at work, uh, I thought, man, I hope I don't have to actually do any balancing because I, I, I'm walking around with a smile, like I can't frown. There's no sad moments, and it's an amazing feeling. And I don't want, I don't want it to end. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what I do. Hope you guys enjoyed Sunday chill commentary. Sorry if I got a little sappy on you. <laughs> All right, guys, peace. Game kind of went to shit, but your boys in love. Deal with it. You guys, only use me, Blade, and this is your Sunday chill commentary. Um, you may have noticed that I haven't really been, uh, oh, what? I'm making a ghost class. I just, I remember back in COD 4, I thought I was so special because I used UAV Jammer and hardly anybody did it. So, it's almost like a feeling of prestige. Before I get talking about prestige, let me also, uh, kind of discuss, like, the reason why I've been posting videos is because there wasn't, I actually been working on a lot of videos, but there wasn't anything that I was like, man, this is not something I want to like present. You know what I mean? Like this isn't good. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, you, and all YouTube makers, we all kind of know when, when we have a, a good video and like a filler video, you know what I mean? Like musical artists have filler. Like you ever buy an album and you, there's a couple songs there and you're like, there's no way this person can actually be proud of this song, right? Oh, oh I hate one-hit kills. Except for when they're by me. Just like I said, the golden rule of Call of Duty is it's fun when you do it. How dare you try to attack my teammate? Random person, you. I'll knife you before that ever happens. I will guard your honor. Um, <laughs> prestige, though. Think about it for a second. Okay, so like prestigious things. The reason why a lot of people like prestigious thing is because there's no, there's no, there's very few people or not as many people that either know about it or can possibly obtain it. And that becomes part of its value. I.e. if there was, if there were some maps that came out for Black Ops and only 500 people got it, you'd feel very prestigious in order to play those maps. Even the maps are crap. So it's almost like you're not even looking at the value of the product. You just know that the product is in limited supply. And that in itself brings the value up. Do you kind of get what I'm saying? 
Like, uh, I like I like cars that not super baller cars, but like cars that are like rare. Uh, ooh, you kind of see me spin a little bit. I was kind of excited to hit that tomahawk. There's long pauses. I'm just drinking water because it's hot as balls. <laughs> and also, uh, drink water, kids. But think about that, though. That's almost like semi-form of hate heen in a way because that's the only thing where if they cut the if they cut the production value in half of it of like how many units that they were going to make whether it would be a car or a cd or a movie or a club or something like that you know what i mean like if there was uh, a good example like my car there's only like 900 of them ever made so it's just like you don't see those every day if I had enough money, I could just go and buy a Bentley, and it wouldn't be nothing. It'd just be, I spent a lot of money on a Bentley, and, and obviously I would take a Bentley over my car, you know, if you said, take this or this, obviously. But, I do enjoy the prestigious, I do enjoy the people that are actually fans of something, to, when they look at it, like, damn, you did that? Like, I'm thinking about going to COD XP, um, thinking about it. I don't know, though. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm contemplating it. I'm, we're gonna, I'm gonna do the PAX thing. And actually, next weekend, I'm doing the Sade thing. And that, in itself, is a prestige. To me, it's a prestigious event. Because it's not like she comes by, you know, every year. It's just like the last time she toured, it was like 2001 or 2002. I'm excited I get to go see her. That's a prestigious event. I watched this show. What was it? Um, Parks and Recreation. And the guy was talking about how he wanted to make a nightclub called Eclipse. It only happens twice a year. And you're only in there for 15 minutes and you spend five grand. And there would be some people out there in the world be like, yes. And if there was a way for me to, like, time travel, fuck yeah. Because I think it'd be like, I'm big. I like time travel movies. I really do enjoy time travel movies. Like, uh, The Butterfly Effect is a really good movie, even though it's a little fucked up. Um, the Back to the Futures I love. And it's just for the simple idea that... Uh, a, that's a prestigious thing. In order to, if for you to go back into time and kick it and be able to, you know, like imagine that. Imagine you came back and you're like, uh, and your roommates like going, "Dude, we went out, we got so wrecked, bro." And they're like, "What'd you do this weekend?" And I was just like, "I went to the 40s." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that'd be that'd be prestigious. Like I was, I was talking to a friend because I was really excited about going to see Sade, right? And I was thinking about, it. I was like, the only way I could be more excited was if. Pac and Biggie did a concert and had like Aaliyah open for her. That's the only way I would be more excited. And that would be imagine imagine if that ever happened. If if Pac and Biggie came back, like they either were never dead through some miracle, whatever, they were, came back for one concert. You know how expensive those tickets would be for a prestigious event like that. You know how expensive that would be. But you know how amazing it would be to see to see Pac and Biggie. Um, with Aaliyah opening. <laughs> That's crazy, though. But honestly, honestly, though, prestigious stuff means that you enjoy it just because other people, um, you're not, for, there, other people aren't fortunate enough to enjoy it. So, man, I would love to see, <laughs> that'd be cool, man. Uh, I, I would love to be in, like, a uh, first sitting for, like, a Brian De Palma movie. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, I used to use UAV Jammer, and I liked it because I was the only person doing it. And I don't know what that factor is when, when you feel like you like doing something just because it's different. But then once everyone else starts doing it, you're kind of like, eh, not that cool. So we're, we're putting value on stuff that has nothing to do with the value of something. So, only use me, Blade. Hope you guys enjoyed your Sunday Chill commentary. I'm going to go... Uh, Prepare for Sade in seven days and uh, watch my Curb and watch uh, Curb, Breaking Bad, and Entourage. That is my Sunday night, and I hope you guys have a good Sunday night yourselves. Peace and buckries. Five planes standing by. Whoa, hey. <laughs> that was beast. What's up, guys? Um, before you guys figure out about the color on the screen, uh, what that was going on is just like... It, I found it really weird, the, the flow or feelings of, of a commentary. Uh, 
when some people have certain things they want to talk about or whatever. So then they, they do commentaries and it doesn't match. The five doesn't match. So uh, this isn't something I'm going to do every video. This is probably something I'm only do for this video. But uh, well, I want to switch it up and I just added a little black and white slash blue because it looks like, um, I don't know, it looks like kind of like Book of Eli type of colors. I thought it would be cool and also kind of set a good little mood for the Sunday Chill commentary. So uh, what is up, guys? Uh, obviously, a lot of you guys are just getting out of the, uh, the Call of Duty uh, charity event which um which is a really really cool event and it got me thinking about like the montages you know and the reason why it got me thinking about montages and moments and how we need to fucking remember not only the moment of stuff happening but also remember the energy level and the excitement and the and, and the feeling in the room you know when when that when certain amazing stuff happens because i like one thing i noticed that with with montages or whatever as far as like call of duty stuff is that it doesn't necessarily capture how excited or how big it was you know with people like commentating it or whatever uh case in point during the charity event small beans this isn't a 4v4 situation right one competitive player three youtubers on each team 4v4 small beans gets a triple with a granada and then he gets a quick scope so he actually gets a four man kill feed in a 4v4 uh competition and fwiz hutch everyone freaked out there was like this little murmur of everybody freaking out i used to live um in this apartment complex and it was literally like apartment complex and then second then up the hill on the hill that we lived on there was another apartment complex and then on the very very top was like a third apart apartment complex right and there was a time when um the sonics were playing the spurs in the 05 playoffs that's what it was sonics playing the spurs in 05 playoffs and i think i don't really remember it correctly but i think it was either ray allen or um or Lewis, I don't remember which one. I think it was pretty sure it was Ray Allen because he was wearing the filthiest J's ever. I want those J's, man. If anybody knows how to get me those J's, let me know. I will buy those J's so quick from the the O five playoffs. Um, but uh, he he basically lined up for a shot. This is versus the Spurs, and everyone like you can hear like a gasp around my entire apartment complex, right? Everyone was like, oh, right. And the funny thing was, is that the, um, I actually heard it like the entire apartment complex, even though we had like, you know, good insulation or whatever. The entire apartment complex was like, oh, like we were like, it's going to happen. No. And just disappointment. Right. Well, on the, the apartment complex that was up the road, I could hear them in a collective sigh. But like two seconds later and then two seconds and then the same kind of thing two seconds later on the upper thing. And I actually talked to the Comcast guy and I was like, hey, is there a little bit of a delay as you're going up this hill as far as the feeds? And uh, the guy was like, yeah, there, there, there is a tiny, tiny delay from the feed that goes from the apartment complexes up. And I was it was like amazing, though, because you can like to hear a collective to hear collective excitement during a competitive event or during like a basketball I'm, I'm gonna say it for basketball right to hear like how i don't know if you guys have ever been to like a basketball game or whatever but it gets loud and when there's something amazing happens when it does happen the excitement explosion level is amazing um you know what i mean you're just like that just happened oh my god you know and uh i think we need to kind of relive those moments because like it's I noticed that a lot more montages, as far as Call of Duty go, have gone the route of they'll include reactions. I think that the reactions add to how amazing the montage moment is. As long as they're not acting stupid, though. You know what I mean? Like, oh, 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 like that. You know what I mean? As long as they're not, and I'm sorry for even being loud during a Sunday Show commentary, during this ninja-like, this looks like the Book of Eli, man. Like, when I was going through the color correction, I'm not an editor, man. Like, I always wanted, are you in Last Stand? Sit down take even more of a seat guys okay another thing that's really really funny is when you hear a lot of people complain about something and you've never done it okay like um like crack or uh heroin or call of duty black ops or whatever <laughs> i'm just kidding about the crack and heroin part but when you hear everyone 
everyone complaining about something, then they, then you know that that's an annoying thing, right? And I've never had to deal with a uh, second chance in the in this Black Ops game where you kind of you know fall to the ground. And my boy Thunder, he always be like, he always be complaining about it. And a lot of people complain about it. Like even people that never complain were like, this is annoying. And I was always thought I was like it can't be that bad, man. Just shoot him again. And then I went on my shooting account to try to get some, try to you know just shoot, just change it up a little bit from the knifing thing. And I was like, fuck this. This is not, this is not the truth. This I now I get why everyone's complaining about it. This is really bad. And then go back to knifing. And this one I I actually got a flawless gameplay. And I think like my style of play was original from the COD Four days was originally based on a ghost player and now it's really really weird because i like theoretically speaking i should be using ghost but i do know how much ghost is hated and back in the cod four days all i used was ghost but now things somehow change so <laughs> guys for real O five O five playoffs the ray allen jordans basically it's like seattle jordans if you know how to get that let me know I'm actually curious about that. I want to reach out. Besides that, obviously, that's that seems horrible to end the Sunny Chill commentary on that. But I w hope you guys enjoyed yourself. Peace and butt grease. Bye. Gotta love that intro. What's up, guys? Only using Blade. This is your Sunny Chill commentary. I know a lot of you guys and gals uh, don't get this on Sunday, but... The, the best way I could do it is I'm human, and uh, the reason why I started Sunday Chills was just for the fact of Sunday always has that super unique feel. I like the, the, the evening time right before it gets dark, so that's the time I record these commentaries, and that's when I think the best commentaries come out. So, But to you, it might be the best way for you to have a bowl of cereal and uh, watch some Blade in the morning, so uh, let's just not fret about time, okay? Um, I did kind of want to talk about uh, Faith. And uh, I'm not, uh, actually, I'm not really that big into dictionaries, <laughs> uh, but I think I know what faith is, and I'm sure people are going to be like, I know what faith is. Um, but a lot of people have this misconception that faith has something to do with religion. And um, I'm, not a, I'm not really, really well versed in religion, but it is a form of faith. And what I mean by that is just like, let's say you tell your buddy, hey, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to fall backwards and you stand behind you and you catch me, okay? Now, you have to have faith or a trust um, in that person in order to say, okay, you're going to fall back and you're going to you know, get in there, you know? Uh, but also, faith is like, um, it can be equated to, I, in my own personal, the way I interpret it, and I know everyone's different, but the way I interpret it is, is that faith is a way to to describe the feeling or the the choice the justification of choice making does that make sense the justification of choice making a lot of times is based off faith i.e you may give someone an opportunity even though other people think the opportunity isn't given it isn't worth it to them you know what i mean um i had faith that if i revived this guy he would go and get killed again so why why even waste my time i'm just kidding um but you know what i mean like a lot of times you'll uh you'll do stuff for people um or you'll basically make a choice and the logical outcome isn't what you're expecting because you have faith in this what will happen you know what i mean uh it's a lot about reading patterns um and you know the reasons why you make certain decisions is based off faith. You don't actually have every single uh, move calculated, but you um, you are so sure of the outcome. And another part of what faith is is I think that in order to to go based off faith, is you need to have patience and you need to kind of look at things in the bigger picture. I.e., it may not happen a day. Sit down. It may not happen a day, but if you keep if you keep on doing right. If you, if you do what you know is right and, and steadily, let's say all you make is a dollar a day, but you save a dollar a day, right? Well, that's 365. You're not really making shit. Um, let's say you saved uh, 100, $100 a day, okay? 
if you saved it and didn't spend it, you would have what thirty six about like thirty six thousand. I think that's what it is. You'd have about thirty six thousand dollars at the end of the year, and that's a that's a good amount of actual money. And it's just like the only thi- oh, this is the part where I wanted to be like, okay, this time out, time out from deep talk. This is beast gameplay. Tomahawk that guy in the corner. Sit down. I know you're coming. And then this guy, I don't get him, but I think I actually kill him. This buddy because he goes into last stand. Don't like the new uh, playlist. Ooh, watch this. Stunned double. Get off me. Okay. So you need to have time. And that's the one thing a lot of people hate is because it's not like it's not like you go, oh, so it takes two years to get this? Okay, let me get two. Um, here's two years. You, you, no, you actually have to spend the two years. Or, or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, you time is the only thing that you can't earn. I mean, you can earn it or whatever, but that time, it's not like you can just go, okay, today I'm going to splurge, I'm going uh, to spend two weeks right now on this, bam. It doesn't work like that. And so, it's really odd where there's things that aren't even in your control, which I, I don't believe that faith is in your control, because that's honestly how you feel about something, and time is in control. Time, and a lot of, time, and a lot of situations, call for the expenditure of time, which is really, really crazy, but also, that leads into patience, and the reason why I say that is because I'm one of the most patient people in the world. Like, I'm so patient. I'm such a patient person. I don't know. That's just one of my traits that I think works really, really well. <laughs> Get off of me, son. Um, so the combination of patience and faith, uh, you can go around and you can just do your thing. And you know that in the end, it'll all be okay. And that's why I have the attitude that I have. It's just I know everything's going to be cool and chill. Um whatever you worry about don't worry about it because it's not that serious you're not going to worry about it the next day sit all the way down only as you play this has been your sunday chill commentary hope you guys enjoyed it i sure did and uh oh yeah also um the san andreas let's play uh that's gonna be coming closed soon but i'm still always gonna come back and talk to you peace and buckries Wait a second, is this oh, his chill on. Sunday commentary? This, no it can't, it can't be, I, I'm confused. Why do you hate sauce? <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is the question, why do you hate sauce? What is sauce, sauce, what has sauce ever done to you? I don't care for it. So if you were to go to a restaurant and order chicken strips like you did many a times, <laughs> several times, <laughs> like five out of six meals you've had have been like chicken strips or At chicken least. of some sort, Yeah. why do you hate sauce? I just don't really care for it. Chicken's good how it is. Like why you gotta be going putting crazy shit on it? Do you understand the, the sauce options that were available to you though? <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I was unaware. I was unaware. Okay. So. The full potential of the sauce. I, no, but honestly. <laughs> Buffet, like, that was. <laughs> like, when I order sauce, I have to, like, I, I, I feel like I have to, I order the sauce I want, and then I have to kind of, like, rein the ropes on it to not sound like a glutton or something, because, like, I'm a sauce connoisseur. Mm-hmm. Like, honestly, when people talk about best fast food, oh, the game's starting. What's up, guys? Sunday, chill commentary. Introduce yourself, you sauceless bastard. I am Torture Trilogy, or <laughs> Carson <Hill. laughs> Apparently the, the sauce hater. The sauce hater. Like, I don't... That That's really ruining the friendship, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if we can be cool anymore, man. Well, dude, I mean, it's like you're you're ordering food, and they say, and what sauce do you would you want? Like, they, they even subconsciously word it in such a way <laughs> where they know, obviously, you want sauce. What kind do you want? We have all kinds of flavors. We're like the Baskin and Robbins of sauce, and you're just like, vanilla. Just none. It just blows my mind, dude. I do agree with you on the waiting thing. Like, waiting at PAX. Yeah, the waiting at PAX. Like, I can't... No. Like, you know how much, you know how much of a pain it is to get to PAX? Like, oh, people no. fly in, they make hotel reservations, they do all this stuff to wait in line. Yeah, it's like you are literally flying across the country to sit in a line and yeah. hang out with people who smell bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Like, I've talked about this, and, like, I've been to PAX before. I'm not hating on PAX. I had a good time. Oh, I look dude. at PAX as different, though. Like, I look at PAX as to meet other YouTube people, people that I've been cool with, you know, in the community and stuff like that. And, like, 
Um, it's like you remember what you said with the gamer vacation. Like we don't know how to take vacations. We're no, we don't know how to take vacations. <laughs> Gamers don't know how to take vacations for shit. I I know how to. I think I know how to. But I wasn't really on vacation. I'm like I'm home. You know what I mean? Yeah, you go drive 40 minutes and you're in Seattle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I'm. Well, no, no, no. We're normally like 15 minutes out, but the fucking bridge was closed. Oh, right. So for you guys that don't know, there's 520 and I 90, and 520 was closed. That's all the time I want to spend on that story because I don't know why I can make a fucking a road closure story any better. <laughs> but in order to get over to Seattle, I had to like loop like horseshoe around, and it was super. It was lame, you know. But what else? And I don't like sitting in traffic. I don't like waiting in lines. We wanted to play Counter Strike, but I was like, "Fuck this!" Like we got in there, and there's like dudes playing cards on the Magic ground. The Gathering. Yeah, they're playing Magic the Gathering <laughs> on the ground in line. Like, I value my time more than that. I really do. Playing a game in a line to play another game. Yeah. At the end of the yeah. <laughs> Too much gaming going on in a fucking vacation, bro. What if you had to have your cards delivered to the line? You're like, <laughs> I want to play cards waiting in this line. Could you maybe deliver me some Magic cards? And you have to wait. <laughs> Terrible, bro. Horrible. Uh, it was good to see everyone. Uh, also, uh, pro tip, don't ever buy drinks at a hotel. It's retarded. You always want to go to a bar. So, we didn't really go. Um, it's interesting, though, because, like, everyone talks about, oh, yeah, you're going to go out there and you get really, really fucked up and this and that, you know. But, like, um, it just didn't work out that way. How about you? How about me what? How about you getting just super tossed? Two shots of Jack is all. <laughs> <laughs> it actually's been like a chill, like uh, kind of like this is a vacation for you, right? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, something Pretty right home week. about. Yeah, a little, yeah. Mm-hmm. Way to get away from home for a minute. Yeah, but uh, but everything's cool, man. It's it's like a weird uh, season of Call of Duty right now because of like the games being out and. You've been playing COD 4 for like four years. You don't give a shit, you no. know? <laughs> I don't give a shit about it. None of this matters to me. I go back to COD 4. You know, it's what? so funny. Like, I think that people actually equate like doing time to playing Call of Duty, which is a horrible reference, but people actually <laughs> treat Call of Duty like it's doing time. They're like, man, you know, just got to get through this rough patch, man, and then November's going to come <laughs> out. Like, it's going to change your classifications. And then, like, I see you, and you're like a COD 4 player. And you're to me, you'd be like the old black dude in the, in the prison. <laughs> that's just like, oh, you're like, like you honestly are like, dude, I got eight more years of playing this COD four before I get tired of it. <laughs> well, I'm literally the only one left yeah, on the server. You're gonna be the old, the last man standing on the COD four server. That'd be yeah, awesome. Like, I me, will be, have yeah. you ever gone on COD two? Like, yeah, recently, no, I, like I, I go on COD two pretty. I go in there like uh, two, three times a month. That's but, gotta be a ghost town though. That's uh, gotta be it, dead. You you, uh, you leave a lobby, you go get something to eat, and you come back and like I'll play a little more COD two. You go back, same people like hey, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> welcome back, bro. And they're like from fucking like France and shit. And yeah, like, what are you doing, bro? Clocking, <laughs> clocking in. Clock it in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tartar, honey mustard, none of that. None no, of that gets you going. I'm good. Damn. <laughs> Sorry, that just that just rattles me. Oh, and they put sweet and sour sauce on his chicken, and this guy got it and looked at me like the judge gave him thirty years or something. He was like, "What? Why? What? No, okay, explain, explain it though. Just explain it, because I, I I don't want it to make you seem like out there. But just explain it though. Just explain what happened. When I order sweet and sour chicken with fried rice. That's okay. what I always get from Chinese places. Okay. 99% of the time, they bring the sauce in a separate container. These people chose not to bring it in a separate container. Okay. They brought me my drink in a fucking can and gave me a glass. Why the That's fuck that they place, it? though. That's that place. <laughs> That's That place just doesn't have a fountain, but it's a nice... not a nice place. It's not a fucking nice restaurant No, it was all right. Like, if, if I had known they would do that, I would have been like... But if you order no something... Sweet. Like, I'm not going to order General Sal's chicken and be like... Put the sauce on the side. It's part of the thing. But I don't. I don't know what the fuck you call that chicken. Like, what do I like dough fried chicken? Like, what the fuck do you say? Like, it is called sweet and sour chicken, but it's like a sauce chicken. Okay. I just like the chicken. I don't give a fuck about the sauce. The best part about it is you just look so. You just look so rattled. You were just like. What do I do? With like, my life. That's like <laughs> the ultimate first word problem because you're just like, what do I do? And then you took like a napkin and you put the, a piece of chicken in the, I'm sorry for putting you on the spot like this, but this shit had me dying, bro. And I'm over here grubbing. I'm like, I'm killing my food. And you put the chicken inside of a napkin and you were trying to get all the sauce. Like you're trying to like polish the chicken <laughs> of all the possible sauce off of it. And like you finally got to eat it, and you're just like, oh no, I'm not waiting. I'm not. Uh, I'm not polishing chicken for my chicken anymore. I'm not 
Take me to Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> um, you I'm, I'm not an asshole, bro. I thought she was hilarious. And we drink water up here, sir. Alright, guys. Sunday Show Commentary uh, with my boy Torch Trilogy. And uh, we're out. Say bye. Bye. Bam. I know it's not Sunday, golly, <laughs> um, but I didn't get you a Sunday Chill commentary because I just wasn't, um, I'm sorry guys, I have to be, I can't just sit down and make a video uh, like on a schedule, like I have to be in a commentary mode where I want to like get up and want to talk to you guys and maybe if I had a job where I was like doing radio then I could definitely do something like that but that would be interacting with other people like as far as me sitting next to a person or talking to someone um sit down i could i could easily do that on a day in day out basis and i wish that i could that'd be fun to do like some radio show or something like that and i think if modern warfare 3 is really just not fun for me i think that i might move in that direction that's not what i'm going to talk about though <laughs> that who just 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 spilled my guts out there um so that's why there's I would love to have like consistent uploads for you guys i.e. like a, a, a rock you can count on um, but uh, but man like this last Sunday wasn't I, it wasn't like a bad Sunday it just I, I didn't feel that there was anything pressing that I wanted to discuss or anything like that and I felt like every time I, I, I don't like to do commentaries if they sound forced because I think you guys can like one problem with uh, doing these video commentaries for as long as I've been doing them is that people really know me. You know what I mean? Like they they know me when they listen to a commentary. They know my points of views on stuff, and 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 people really know me. So like, I can't bullshit. Does that make sense? Like I can't just say something that anybody that really knows me can like look at me and go, "Come on, dude." Now. I think you guys know Blade, you know what I mean? But that's like part of me is just is uh is doing this shit, but I can't bullshit. I can't do it. I it, and it's and it's even if I wanted to bullshit, uh even if I thought like a fib was necessary or something like that, I think a lot of times that if you if someone who's been watching me since the since the Maple days, since the COD 4 days, since the um what was the name of the uh if you can remember the name of the recording device, I'll res I'll say I'll do a smiley face or something. I don't know in the, in the comment section below. Uh, if if this video has been out for a long time, don't think I'm gonna come back and do that. But <laughs> if you can remember the name, actually screw it. Nope, cancel it. Cancel that. Uh, it was a Hava. It's a piece of shit. And I actually thought about. I talked to the person that sold it to. Me, I I sold it to. And I'm like, oh, I kind of want to get that back. So Scrock, kind of want to get that back, buddy, just to have it. You know what I mean? I think that'd be cool because that's when it like, because I still have the laptop I had when I first made videos and I still have the, um, uh, I still have the PS3 like that, that, that boy is still going strong. Little PS3 fat boy. And I still got the, um, still got the computer and then I want to get the recording device back because I think it'd be cool to have that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So basically you guys, um, and also if you're like, new if you just found out i don't want anybody to think i'm only cool because i like only bc blade back in 09 it's like no it's not what we're we're discussing here it's that's not it it's do you if you enjoy it cool you know what i mean but at the same time there's some old school cats and the the people that for whatever reason started watching back in the day and and I want to reiterate that it's not bad if you haven't been watching, you know, if, if you're new, that's not, I'm not, I'm not going to, you know what I mean? Like I hate when bands and like people like that, they're like, Oh, you've only just started listening. Oh, Oh, you're not a true fan. I'm like, fuck off. Can I just enjoy the shit? <laughs> um, so there's three things in media. There's, uh, the most, the, mo okay. As far as the money makers in media in America, 
There's uh, pornos, number one. There is video games. And then there is cinema or movies. And um, <laughs> I used to watch a lot of movies. I didn't used to play video games. Now, the last couple of years, I've been like enthralled with video games. And it's almost just like... Okay, I'm playing video games, this and that, you know what I mean? But I don't I don't foresee myself playing video games forever. I'm not that diehard about it, you know what I mean? But and uh without getting super mopey, I have a feeling like I need to I need to progress what I do cuz I can't play uh Call of Duty and play video games and commentate forever. You know what I mean? So I need to move it into something else. And I think like radio would be the mo- the perfect thing for me. Like, I got a buddy who actually is on the radio. Like, we grew up together. We played basketball together. We still kick it. And he's, like, on the sports radio station. And so I think it's pretty cool. And I think that it's something I'm built for. Like, every time I go on Painkiller already, I have a fun time. And a lot of times people are just like, you know, some people don't like me. Fuck them. Uh, but I think that I can keep people interested on a radio station. That'd be cool, man. Like, why can't there be... I need it. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, why can't there be? That'd be really cool. This right here is like a 17. Sit down. This right here is like a 17 streak. Uh, 17 murders premeditated. <laughs> and I have a feeling that uh, I didn't even want to mention. I really didn't even want to mention this. But uh, because every video that's coming out is Modern Warfare 3, Modern Warfare 3, Modern Warfare 3. And it's just like, ugh, shut up about it. Can I, but I'm just going to say my little take on it. It looks like it's going to be a fucking clusterfuck. And um, uh, Infinity War doesn't have the best track record for fixing things. So I have a feeling that they're giving us a V12 supercharged fucking SUV. The 2012 Typhoon fuck off or something. And there's no tuning to it, and it's crazy, and I get to sit down. And so I, I, have, I have a really strong feeling that it's going to suck. And Modern Warfare 3 is going to be, um, the search is going to be cool, but that's about it, you know? Uh, and so I was thinking about it, I was just like, man, someone asked me what my interests are, you know what I mean? And uh, I was kind of at a loss for words, because I like to kick it. I like to uh, I like to play some Call of Duty. I like to do this YouTube commentary thing. Uh, I like to go out with my friends and stuff like that. But that's like um, I found myself watching fewer and fewer movies. And what I mean by that is there's just fewer and fewer movies that I end up. What it was that guy just he had knife repellent. <laughs> um, it's really weird because I watch fewer and fewer movies. But that used to be my passion, man. Like. And I lately I've been watching more and more movies where I've been like, okay, and 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 watch the good ones. You know what I mean? Like you can kind of tell when you see a preview for a movie or you talk to other people that are like mine in this. This is hilarious. Um, <laughs> and I think the reason why is because the YouTube stuff is I'm not interested in really in too many YouTube videos. Um. And the funny thing about it is, is I know that there's some there's some people out there that aren't interested in YouTube videos anymore, and they might miss this one, and that's sad because they could have the same feeling I have, and it's kind of like you know picking up the phone and the person's already there, and so they could be going through the same thing where they're just not feeling the YouTube videos anymore, and and the reason why is because YouTube is is when just any any asshole can make a video and put it on YouTube, you know what I mean? Like I I have zero production skills. I just like to play Call of Duty and stab people and knife and like share a little little snippets of me with you. So like with the movies though, the movies are like uh really really good movies uh leave you feeling edu- not educated but like feeling like that you're happy that you got that perspective on things. See what I'm saying? Like uh I end up watching Men's Society tonight. I love that movie and uh can't hear my boy. Sit down. And also what I noticed is, I don't know why, but I like movies where the main character dies in the end. Or movies where the shit never happened. I.e., it's like a person thinking, oh, hey, what's going on? And then, no, it's like a person thinks in their mind, 
some crazy shit just happened, and then they go back to that moment. And they're like, nope, I don't want to cross that street. Um, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I love the butterfly effect, and this spo- turn this video off if you've never seen butterfly effect. If you really watch butterfly effect and you watch it with the director's cut, what you realize is that never happened. See what I'm saying? Like they've they went through it. So he's at point A, which is him being born, right? And then he lives his life, and he's able to change his life, and then he realizes that his life, it actually ends up hurting the, the, the love of his life. And so he wants to make sure that he doesn't hurt her, and every scenario that he goes through ends up hurting her. So what he does is he kills himself as a baby. And... Sorry if I ruined Butterfly Effect for you. And a lot of people who, haven't, who say that it sucked, watch the director's cut. But um, the the movies where the, the actor dies in the end is always interesting to me. Because we can say, okay, that's the total collective of that. And then also the movies where all it is is premonitions. Like, good movie, Body Double. Um, body Double, if you, really, if you end up watching Bobby Double, Body Double, like you, can, you can kind of get the same kind of feeling of that. And, um, really good YouTube videos. I don't know why, but the uh, host always quits the game, so it's gone forever. It doesn't count for the stats. Um, the Wings of Redemption video, the mon- my favorite Wings of Redemption video is a Modern Warfare 2 video called Modern Warfare 2 in 8 minutes. And he shows you how to one man army noob tube. And then he, the game, the network connection fucks up. So that game didn't actually exist except for he was recording it. And that game that we just played, I don't think it registered. Because all of a sudden I shit on the game so tough that it says disc is unreadable. So, um, there you go. I'm going to upload it now because why not? And then uh, playing some other games. Peace and chippies. Hey, hey, what is going on, guys? Only you play with your Sunday chill commentary, a time where we can come together and I'll talk a lot and you don't really say anything because I'm not in a conversation with you. I am in a conversation with you. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but, man, this this Sunday is like a nice little uh, transfer to normalcy, man. Like, football was up. I was, like, super excited to watch. See, last... Here's the thing. Like, as you guys know, I'm an Entourage fan and you guys are so lucky because... I would just talk about Entourage all freaking day long. <laughs> um, the reason why I say you guys are lucky because it probably gets old having me talk about it. But tonight was the last episode. And, uh, wow. You know, I don't want to ruin it for anybody. So, this is what happened. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, but, like, you know, Sparta Sundays, is you. Lo- I look forward to watching. A lot of great shows are on Sunday. Like, HBO normally has an amazing lineup. Breaking Bad's on. Like, a lot of really, really good shows. But I knew that this entourage was gonna it was gonna be like the wrap up. It was gonna be like you know what I mean, this is the final episode. And it was really, really first off, I didn't like how they have this thing where they have HBO Go, right? So to promote it, at the end of episode six, like there's eight episodes in the season, at the end of episode six, they they go, Hey, to watch episode seven now, go, you know, get HBO Go. Well, I already had it, but so I was like, Okay, I'm gonna go watch it. Like, if someone brought over to you a DVD of a show, you're going to, you know, and you have time, you're going to watch several episodes. You're not just going to watch one and be like, okay, I'm going to hold on to this DVD for a week and watch the next episode. No, you're going to watch it. So, new Entourage, okay, I'll watch it on my cell phone with the iPhone Go thing and, or the, the HBO Go thing, and that will be cool or whatever. So, that prolonged of what was going to happen, but then I, as I was watching, I was like, man... There's how are they gonna wrap this up, you know? And there's you know that there's gonna be a thing where they're gonna wrap it up, which is which is a weird feeling that you have. Like honestly, I thought that they that the way that they were doing it because they really didn't have anything wrapped up. That's like saying the your plane leaves at noon and the, at eleven thirty these dudes are still at the house. 
And you're like, wait a second, you there, there's a process to wrap this up. There's some security. There's things you have to check out. There's shoes you got to tie and untie. And, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> but uh, it ended. I don't want to talk anymore about it because there might be some people that haven't seen it. Or I don't want to ruin that for anybody. And I hate people that ruin stuff for people. So, I'm not going to do that for you. But it was a really good episode. Uh, one of my favorite shows of all time. And it's kind of crazy, and there's going to be some withdrawals later on, and I think they're probably going to have a movie. They should. I mean, if they gave Sex and the City a movie, they definitely got to give Entourage a movie, because Entourage was basically a dude Sex of the City, if you really think about it. So, there was that, there was football, and uh, the thing I like about football is that, you know, it's something to do during Sundays. A lot of times it gives people a reason to barbecue, which is all... Like, barbecued food tastes way better than, like, if you go to a restaurant or whatever and just, you know... I'm not a chip guy. I don't buy chips, but, like, people seem to have chips during during that. And I eat the hell out of some chips, so I don't know. <laughs> but also, here's the thing. I, as you guys may know, may have... I have, like, Peter Pan syndrome where... I don't ever, like, I'm not really in the mood to grow up, you know? Like, I, I, certain life things have made me grow up as far as, like, being a man and stuff like that. But, like, I still have, I s- still am clinging on to, to, like, the innocence and, like, the simplicity of being a kid, you know? And so I just feel like I'm a really big kid. <laughs> and uh, what kind of triggered that is <sighs> during the football season... Here's the thing, like I've been working from my, I've worked from, from home before and it's awesome. It's the coolest shit ever to work from home. But the one problem is is like during the summer, it's weak. And the reason why I say it's weak during the summer is because I don't want to be in my house during summer. I want to be out and about. You know what I mean? But I have to be, you know, need to be at the house. Now luckily with the job that I've created for myself with this YouTube stuff, it's pretty cool that I don't have to you know what I mean, I can kind of do it whenever I want. But, you know, there's some times when I'm just like, you know what, guys, I'm going to stay home tonight. I got to I gotta get some gameplays. I got to entertain my fans. And um, the thing is, is that during the winter times, you got to think I live in the Seattle area. Imagine this rain coming down on the window pane. It's, it's light out, but it's just kind of gloomy, rainy, light drizzle. When I'm at home. And I'm playing Call of Duty. What might be the new one that just came out. Like, with Modern Warfare 3, I'm going to be going through this. I feel like I'm skipping school. Like, that's how I feel when I'm at when I'm at home. I feel like I, I skip school. Like, I'm supposed to be somewhere. Like, anybody that you've ever... You know, like, every once in a while, you got to play hooky from work. You got to. Like, every once in a while, like, people... Everyone, if, there's, if you're out there and you got the Cal Ripken Jr record of most consecutive days going to work man one of these days just call in sick or something i'm telling i know this is like it on the surface it looks like horrible horrible advice if you just take a sound bite a lot of people can be like oh blade just says you should skip school and you should uh you should fake calling in work for sick and you should uh you should just neglect your duties as a as a as a human and as a provider no 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 i'm just saying like this the <laughs> that it you know what thinking back on it, that is a little ridiculous to say hey take a you know f- fake sick or whatever but there is something there's something really cool about like every once in a while I have to do something where I have to go out like in the morning like I like you know like when I have to like take my car in to uh, like have something done to it or whatever and they always want to work in the morning I'm like that's fucking lame and then I drive and I'm like all these people I'm like you guys realize you don't have to be doing this you can enjoy yourselves like. People are so people think that not enjoying themselves is like the key to success. So I'm like, no, enjoy yourself's the key. Bam! Fucking marinate on that one. I'm out. Say no more. <laughs> ah. Nyquil, Nyquil, Nyquil. Um <laughs> That's what's on my mind. The Nyquil's syrupy greenness kind of reminds me of Jägermeister. Um, but uh, took some Nyquil, took some other thing or whatever because I've been having a just a mucusy, violently nasty cough and dry throat at the same mucusy and dry at the same time. So it's like dry mucus. It's disgusting. Um, and I blame pistachios. Um, 
I went to Costco and I ate food uh, a couple days ago. I ate like the little thing outside, <coughs> and um, I uh, had. <coughs> Sorry, guys, that's completely unprofessional. Stop, cut. Um, <laughs> I uh, I went to Costco and I had a hot dog outside of their establishment. And why did you switch to Pepsi, you assholes? Coca Cola is way better than Pepsi. Just saying. Uh, there's a lot of things. Here's things like uh, this is better than that. I'm I like certain things better than other things just because that's the, they're the better thing. Like Coke is better than Pepsi. I'm sorry. Uh, I had an argument with this guy named Excal. You may have heard of him. He um, he for whatever reason was under the assumption that uh, lemon lime Gatorade was good. And Gatorade's obviously superior. I mean. The thing is, is that I don't even want to like comment on certain stuff like that because it's like the answer. I know the answer. I know it's better than the other thing, and so to to debate it, it's like you can't debate that. Like what I this is a funny situation. Like, come on, this this team sucked. By the way, the team I was on was horrible, and like it, I I had to carry them. My my back was hurting. <laughs> What's up, guys? Only as you blade. Sun and chill commentary. That was kind of a crazy little intro. I don't know anything I just told you. Uh, I have no idea. I'm going to listen back to it. But I think that's better for when it kind of just flows. So um, let me get to my iPhone. I didn't have like a, a super topic that I wanted to talk about. But I was sitting here watching the end of the uh, Sunday night football game. And uh, it kind of got into like the garbage time. And... Um, so I was like, okay, I, I kind of want to watch it out, but I don't know. And um, the thing that's funny about garbage time is, which everyone hates, in every sport there's a garbage time. Not really in baseball, but like, it. Well, I think the entire time in baseball is garbage time. Oh, baseball jokes. Um, <laughs> I hate baseball. It's so boring. I don't care. Call me an American. I'm not an American, but baseball is the fucking most boring shit ever. The only time baseball was fun was in the like 95, 96 season with the Mariners. My, oh my. Um, <laughs> so, I didn't have any, anything really to talk about with, for the Sunday Show commentary. I was kind of watching the garbage time. And one thing I did kind of notice was, like, the um, the the players on the winning team because they knew they were going to win. Like, garbage time is basically like, we already know the outcome of the game. So, what happens down the court or on the field doesn't really matter. We're just doing it to be done with it, you know, to, to run out the clock, whatever. And, like, in football, you see that a lot because, they'll, you know, they'll get to a point where they'll be able to take snaps and the game's literally over because they just have to hike the ball and snap it. It's just like, why can't you guys just kind of go into a consensus and be like, it's over. Like, I give up. I think the reason why we wouldn't do that is because, like, sometimes NFL matches up teams where the, the game's over before it even began. So I think under that rule of saying, hey, when the game's over, let's just end it. Well, the game's over before you even start with some of these matchups. So... So wisdom. I uh, oh yeah. So this is what I was going to talk about the uh, <laughs> um, the Pete uh, the pizza delivery guy tonight. He was a fan of mine, and uh, in the last like couple weeks, I've started getting no noticed by fans. Uh, was like at the PAX. Um, I guess PAX was a couple weeks ago, but like it was at PAX. Uh, I noticed this dude. Who I th- it was really cool because it wasn't a kid or anything that it was like an actual adult who had who had like a wife and had a, had a kid in the Volvo and he was sticking his head out. He's like, "Blade, I love you." And I'm like, "That's pretty cool." <coughs> Still sick, guys. I'm sorry. And I think I get sicker because I cough up this phlegm shit and I have nowhere to spit it out, so I re-swallow it, which is retarded. But like, what am I supposed to do in that situation if I have nowhere to spit it out at? And it's really funny because I just realized that there's always somewhere I could spit it out at. I'm not in business meetings. So <laughs> it's me literally going, how lazy am I? Okay, so I have this mouthful of phlegm. I need to spit it out. Well, I'd have to get up, walk over to a sink, or walk to the bathroom, to the toilet. All of them are in within 15 feet. So that's like three or four strides in my feet. But, I mean, there's a bouncing act because I have to hold a mouthful of phlegm or whatever. But to spit it out. And I go, oh, I have no place to spit it out. Oh, my God. Um, and I swallow fucking phlegmy nastiness back up. That's retarded. I don't know. Like, I 
I need to kick the laziness, man, because like I, I've often I'm I'm like one of the laziest people you will ever meet, and I I find humor in the fact that I do certain things, and I think that it's like that's fucking smart. Like if I could like you know if the remote battery is dead, but I could change the channel on the TV with my toes by stretch. Like I work so hard to not work at all. Does that make sense? Like I. I am the hardest working lazy person ever. Does that make sense? Because like I actually work at the skill of laziness. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's so dumb. Like, you know, just sitting here talking about it, and it just sounds ridiculous. But I know that's what goes what what goes on with me. You know what I mean? Like, <sighs> it's just dumb. Uh, so I definitely definitely wanted to get this kind of talked about or whatever. But, like, I was sitting here and I was just, you know, like, people are like, oh, so how you been? Like, a lot of times I meet up with people I haven't seen, I say, in, like, the month period. And, you know, it's always weird because they go, well, how you been? And it's just like, everyone hates that question, but everyone asks it. It's really weird. Because most of the time in a month period in someone's life, there's not a huge change. And also, if there's a huge change, do you really want to drop that on them? (coughs) So... I don't know. That that's just really odd. But they ask me how you been. I'm just like, I oh, just been doing my YouTube videos. And in my mind, as a third person, I was just like, what are you a fucking nerd? Like that's all you do? And it's like, mm, I guess so. But then uh, before I did the Sunday Show commentary, I got this idea because two things: uh, White Boy Seventh Street. Uh, a lot of people hate on him. I've hated on him in the past. But I watched this video where it was me during the Billionaires Challenge. And I went on like a knifing tear versus X Jaws and Freddie Wong. And in the background, you can see him cheering for me. So I love him. There you go. That's all I need. Just some cheer, some cheerfulness. <laughs> uh, but he did a video where he like showed like the midnight release portion of it and just the best of Black Ops. And uh, I kind of want to do that for, um, I kind of want to do that for, uh, for my Black Ops year. Cause I actually made a little, uh, a notes and those notes that I use for the Sunday Show commentary. When I was like, "Oh, I'm going to use this for Sunday Show commentary," though I, f- I forgot to even look. I'm now looking at my phone eight minutes into this, so um, this is what I want to do for the Sunday Show commentary. For for the I'm sorry, this is what I want to do for the, the, the montage um, notes. This is what the things I want to include in chronological order: drunk release date, the sticks and stones fail, gun game humiliation idea. Fan freak out, the 40 kill TDM, getting my car, getting my girlfriend, going to Cali, going to Cali twice, started the Sunday Show commentaries at San Andreas, and now the Ham XP. So, if there's any memorable moments uh, from this last year that you I left out, let me know. Let me know if you guys enjoyed the Sunday Show commentary. I'm always be Blade. Peace! <laughs>what's up guys um here's the thing so like life is about intake and outtake you know what i mean and so i've been sick and what happens when i get sick is i normally think i could just wait it out i could just beat it you know and i work from home you know i do this youtube stuff from home but i've been having like uh i just was not in a good mood because i was sick and i thought it was the kind of sickness i could just wait out but it wasn't it was actually something i needed to go to the doctor and get medication for well the problem with that is I don't like going to the doctor uh, for a couple of reasons. A, they're just going to tell me I'm sick, and I already know I'm sick. I wish I could be like, listen, doc, I'm sick. So I don't even want you to tell me I'm sick. Just let me know what I need, what needs to happen. And then also they're going to let me know about other, you know, like let's say if you have like a bucket, like a car, you know, and you got to take it to the mechanic, and, you, and you're already taking the mechanic because you know the mechanic's going to be like, you need to get your brakes fixed, you need to get your oil changed, you need to do this, this, and this, and this. And you're like, fuck, can you just put the rim back on the car and let me go? Um, so there's a lot of, I know that they're going to say that there's lots of things wrong with me, aside from me just having this cold. And I actually had early stages of pneumonia, and I had strep throat. And um, so... We had to go through the whole ordeal, you know, um, of the other parts of me. And and so I finally went to the doctor, saw him, and the first thing the doctor said is just like, so um, how many boobs do you see on a daily basis? And I told him, I was like, well, normally tons. 
Um, but I hadn't seen any dairy cannons in the time I was sick. And he was just like, whoa, then obviously no wonder you're not getting better. And he recommended that I take the medication, do an inhaler and look at some dairy cannons, just ogle for a little bit. And the, and I realized that the quality of life is much better when I get to see some, some boobs, some heavy hairs. And so there's that there's, and I wasn't even laughing. So I was not, cause here's the thing. Every time I would laugh, my chest would hurt cause I was sick cause I had gunk in my chest. And so the thing was, is like, normally I'm a happy go lucky person. I'm laughing. I'm looking at boobs. Everything's awesome. And you know, playing, I'm playing call of duty, laughing, looking at boobs and just life is great. But I'd been sick. So I, I hadn't been going out. So that my boob, my boob, my visual boob intake was was wasn't there and then I wasn't laughing because I didn't even want to laugh because I was sick so they gave me the medication and it really sucks it's like I don't like another reason I don't like going to the doctors is I don't like filling out the forms why do they make you fill out forms why can't they I don't know give you a computer like a kiosk or something have you enter that stuff in there's no reason why I have to like you already know I'm not going to be in a good mood and you want to have me fill out forms. No one likes to fill out forms. I honestly think that the whole filling out forms part added a couple of days onto the me not going into the doctor. But finally did. Finally got to see some boobs. And um, there you go. And the last video that I commentated was during my sickness. I hadn't seen a boob in a while. And it was about the whole Minecraft thing. And here's the thing, I should have phrased it differently, but basically I should have said, hey guys, why, and it, sh it shouldn't have even been a video, like that's, that's not a good video topic, okay, but at the time of what I was going through, um, it, it seemed, it, I was just like, I, I, I kind of went, not a rant mode, but I kind of like, I was like, dude, let's talk about this, why is Minecraft entertaining? Now, most people explain it to me, there's some haters Thank you. I don't want to discuss Minecraft anymore. I get it. Um, I understand what the allure is. <coughs> I'm not 100% better, but I'm getting there. So, should I have done it differently? No. Because that's how I was feeling at the time. You know what I mean? Like, um, and no one cares. It's a video game. Like, it's really funny because, like, I actually showed like real life friends and a lot of people uh, there was more people that sent me messages saying man that's why I love you Blake because you had the balls to say what was on your mind even though you knew where you were going to get hate hated on and I was watching a Cat Williams stand up special and he was saying man listen if you don't have haters then you're doing something wrong so and I think that you guys would rather me have an opinion on something than to be like this fake politician type commentator and I'm not saying that commentators are like that but there are uh, a lot of people uh, that you know they 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 tiptoe around certain subjects because if you have an opinion everyone's going to be so fickle about it but I stopped really caring about people if they were really mad about my opinions because they're my opinions so fuck it <laughs> um and that damn snipper grizzed me one off the blackboard and that made me sad but then I thought about boobs and man that that's the key to life man that is the key to life just some dairy cannons make sure you got your liquid straight you got to stab some noobs and um man and also I, I know this is going a completely different direction but I'm not hating black ops anymore I don't know why it's just like it's super chill and fun to play right now and it's a, I think it's a decent game. I don't, I, I went back to Modern Warfare 2, and that game is, 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 is pretty rage-inducing. And I'm just like, even though this is really slow and it has its issues and this and that, it's actually a pretty good game. So I know that's completely different than what I've said before, but I'm not here to bitch. I'm here to enjoy stuff, and I hope you guys are enjoying this. Also, another thing that made Black Ops fun is I figured out how to live stream. And live streaming is really cool. I'm going to be live streaming my ass off. There is a link in the description if you want to watch some live stream. I'm actually going to be live streaming. Uh, I think I'm going to live stream some some Black Ops and some COD 4. And maybe even some San Andreas jumps. 
I might even put the Santa Andreas in the live stream of the Santa Andreas. What do you think? Leave 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 a comment. Do you actually know? Because this is like a dated thing. I have no idea where you see this. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go live stream. It's really, really fun. Come and check it out if that's something you're into. And I'm gonna be live streaming. Uh, I'm actually gonna live stream every game of Modern Warfare 3. Oh, I said that. <laughs> Alright, guys. Boise Blade. Peace. All right, I need you to buckle up. <laughs> Woo! Uh, feelings are going to get hurt. I'm sorry. Disclaimer, what I'm about to talk about is if you easily get offended by anything, if, 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 if things just offend you, you have two options. Go ahead and listen and go ahead and hate. Or if, you just, if you're just not in the mood to hear something that could be misconstrued as offensive, then click off. Click off, son. Second time doing this commentary because the first time after release, listening to it, uh, I'm a little hesitant to upload it just because I was I'm, I'm not hesitant I'm not gonna upload it but because I don't think I set it up right I spent way too much time set it up so let's just get right into it okay I was watching this movie and it's called uh, Love and Other Drugs and it's about this girl that has Parkinson's now. Um, she pretty much put her. She was just. She was just. She was nutty, and she had Parkinson's, and so she was kind of putting her like solid boyfriend through just, just emotional, tr emotional wreck, and um, it just wasn't work out because he was just trying to be there for her, and then she was just emotionally was not very good because of the Parkinson's and because of other stuff in her life. So, and she says she gets mad at him. And says, you know what, you can. You know, uh, we can have makeups, we can have breakup sex, but you need to be out of my apartment. And as soon as she says this, I go off into like, I start thinking, and that's not a good thing. <laughs> I start thinking and, I, and I'm like, man, if the last time that you're going to have sex with her and she has Parkinson's, when you're intimate with her, I would try to flare up. No, I don't know flare up's a bad terminology. I would try to not force, but aid in her having um, not a. It's not a called a seizure. It's called a um, an episode. So I'd have I'd want her Parkinson's to to start up while I'm inside her. And I think like the violent shaky to that would probably be an extremely pleasurable experience. And I mean, if anybody's ever had sex with a woman when she like sneezes or coughs, uh, the tightening is pretty amazing. Like, there's, there's no denying that. So what I'm doing is I'm replacing her sneezing or coughing with her having a Parkinson's episode where she violently shakes. Now, I'm not saying anything bad about people with Parkinson's. It's a disease. Uh, my favorite, one of my favorite actors is a kid has it. It's sad. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the actual ability that your body does have something where you can violently shake. And I would like to experience that sexually. Okay. So I think I just did. I think I was able to tiptoe around the lines and for you to understand that it's not something offensive, but from a sound from a sound bite, you would think, "What the fuck is wrong with you, Blade?" You know. And also, what if my what if my dick was like the dick that like cured Parkinson's? Like, what if I just fucked it out of him? Like, do uh, like is it like a superhero thing where it's my civic duty to like go on tour and just go to all the hospitals and and fuck everyone that has Parkinson's? Like, think about that. Like, what if the person that had Parkinson's was a male? I'm not having sex with a male. You know what I mean? But, okay, that's absolutely ridiculous. The idea that my cock is somehow my super human power and that I need to use it for good and, you know, for good and not evil is ridiculous. Because I, I wouldn't have sex with a man. Even if it would cause them to, to not have Parkinson's anymore. 
that's so ridiculous like that the the problems or the thing is is like i have stupid thoughts like that all the time like i'm a goofball and i have these crazy insane thoughts and like if you hear me out on them they're not so insane if you take just a snippet of what i said you're gonna be like you are nuts blade um like the whole you know here's the thing like i've put up I'm going to talk about a couple of videos that I've put up where I've gotten supposed YouTube hate. Uh, me talking about poor kids and the Minecraft video. And it's like, I'm not going to censor myself anymore. Because if, if, if there's something that I want to talk about, if there's something that I find interesting, first off, if something's funny, I'm going to laugh at it. And if you have been predisposed to not laugh at something because it's, it can be construed as offensive, then that's like robot status. You know what I mean? I talked about the whole the whole Peter Pan syndrome thing, and I'm definitely gonna uh, I've been spending time reading up on that because I, I definitely do have that that characteristic. Um, but at the same time, it's just like. The, the people that tell the truth the most are drunks and little kids. Now, I can't be drunk all the time. Um, and I, I don't enjoy, like, as far as drinking goes, it's like a once once a month type of thing. Uh, but when I do, I have a good time. And, you know, enjoy it responsibly and make sure I don't drive. <laughs> um, but, uh, man, the whole, the whole worrying about what 1% of people can find offensive. And also... Just like just like stereotypes, just like people that act a certain way make the rest of us look bad. I'm not talking about something that is just just offensive for being offensive. Like the comedy isn't, or or the thing that makes me giggle or think isn't in the isn't in the offensive part of having sex with a girl with Parkinson's and purposely trying to make her have an outbreak. Like I thought maybe like what if like strobe lights. Or like a flashing flashlight would be work. I would just, you know, flick, 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 just turn the flashlight on and on, you know, just SOS and just get it going. <laughs> and I know it sounds ridiculous. I know it's insane. But like part of what comedy is and is, is sometimes you have to kind of go down this place that is uh, not comfortable. That's why in the beginning of this, I was like, buckle up. I'll hold your hand through this. We'll make it through this. But at first, there's going to be some big bumps where you're going to be like, oh, hell no. Blade's talking about fucking girls with Parkinson's and having flare-ups and stuff like that. But after listening to it, you can kind of get the gist. And um, the thing is, is, if I were to, if I were, when I had a, a thought like that, which I think is just magical. It's just, it's, it's, it's magical. Is it, is it fair to people not to share that because I want to, because I want to run a YouTube channel? I think it'd be more fair to to say it. And if the people get offended, then they get offended. I don't know. Um, again, anybody that has a family member with Parkinson's, you guys know that I'm not making fun of people with Parkinson's. I'm just alluding to the fact of in that rare situation, I think that would be fucking sexually pleasurable amazingness. So there you go. I took you on that journey. Let me know what you think. Um, if you hate me, I'm sorry. Just I'm sorry. I don't know. But if you love me, you love me. I love you too. Sunday Chill Commentary. A walk in the park. That is so... I gotta cut that. What's up, guys? Sunday Chill Commentary by Only Speed Blade. And, uh... I um, I'm not gonna tell you that I just every time I do a commentary I just hop on and and just talk and then that's it and that's just, oh went, went take Charlie um, I was doing it and I realized it wasn't good like it just wasn't good so for inspiration I went back to watch some of my old Sunday Chill commentaries maybe get the vibe get the flow get the feel of it even though Sunday Chill commentary is supposed to be the feel of this current Sunday I didn't know that for that would make that for a good video so I went and watched them and I was like. Skipping them, skipping them, skipping them. And I came across this uh, a San Andreas one where I talk about death. And it was like an hour-long, really good commentary. And during the time, I, I was actually telling stories. And that kind of reminded me that um, I tend to keep friends for very, very, very long periods of time. And 
um, with that, just through life experiences, you always just have, uh, a lot of times you have just great stories you can reminisce on. And I was like, there's a great story and I can't believe I haven't shared it with you guys. And I want to, cause it's pretty fucking funny. So how does this work? So we, my, uh, my two friends, and I'm not going to try to like censor their names because I'm, it's not, I can't do that. I don't know. It just doesn't work to try to remember who this person is. So it's a uh, Jordan and Jr. And we lived together in this house at this time. And it was pretty much like a party house. Um, it was at like the perfect storm of our alcoholisms. <laughs> uh, what I mean by that is like that, this is during a time when I was like drinking a lot, you know, like, like every, pretty much every other night I was drinking, you know, and uh, getting really fucked up and so are my roommates and we took turns and yeah. So there was this one night, um, before this, what had happened was Jordan's mom owned a consignment shop and, uh, she was closing down her shop. And, uh, so she had all this crap, all this stuff. And we had a house on like a fourth of an acre. Like the backyard was massive. So we're like this would be a perfect place to do like a little garage sale. We can make some money off it. So for like, um, you know, the the uh, the Friday and then the Saturday, we were running this consignment thing. And uh, it was a Saturday night and I had gotten really drunk the night before. So I was going to go completely sober. And... Uh, we had all made some money off that, so we decided to go into Seattle. I was the designated driver. Um, I decided to put on, like, a nice suit just to just be super uber, just classing on them. And not something I would wear typically, but, you know what I mean? I was going out. I was, trying, I was dressing to impress, you know? And, then, like, uh, me stepping out the Cadillac, I look like I look like a mobster. You know what I mean? I had, like, the wingtip shoes and all that, so... So I'm feeling really good about myself and I'm not drinking. So I'm like, I'm smoother you know, when I'm not drinking. Like when I'm drinking, I have uber confidence, but that's not that no smoothness. So it was just like a really cool vibe. My buddy Jordan was just getting hammered and uh, he got really, really hammered. So we put him in the lack and he fell asleep. So he's in the back seat. This is out in Seattle. And uh, JR is trying to fuck this girl that he's known for years or whatever. And, uh, she ends up having, ends up fucking, uh, one of our good friends. So I'm not going to name his name, but he, we'll call him Quagmire. Cause he's like the group Quagmire. He's just the man slut that fucks everything and anything. And, um, <laughs> so, uh, girl gets fucked by Quagmire. Now JR is hella pissed. Cause he's like, he's really drunk and he's just like, that girl's cool. I should, you know, this and that. And he's really, really drunk. And during the night, like right around the time when this whole ordeal, when we like we go back to her her place because we're out in Seattle, and then we all just kind of dipped off because it was obviously they were about to be fucking in like a studio. We're not just gonna be kicking it in the room while they're fucking. So we're like, okay, fucking let's let's just go back to the house, Jr. Well, there was this girl. There was there was this, there was this lady that I had met. I'm just gonna call her Craigslist whore. So there's this Craigslist whore, and this is for a completely different time, but just bear with me. I'll say that for another commentary. So this Craigslist whore, and she was trying to come to my house and meet me, and I didn't want to meet her because she sent me MySpace pics of her, and this was back when MySpace was still the shit. And I was like, mm, hell no! Like in my mind, I'm like, no, that's no, I'm not doing it. Like she had a MySpace picture of her with the wedding dress on, she's like, I'm already ready for anyone who wants to put a ring on it, and I'm just like, okay, you're a mess, so I wasn't going to be fucking with that broad, I've never met her in real life, I just, I just, like, talked to her over the phone, and, um, I mean, I got her off of fucking Craigslist, she was a Craigslist whore, and, uh, so, she was really adamant about seeing me that night, and I was like, nope, sorry, I'm not even home, don't even worry about it, and, um, so then she's like, well, I drove all the way from Linwood. Linwood's about 20 minutes north of where we were at. She's like, I'm already, you know, I'm go about to be, I'm at your house. I brought a bunch of different clothes. We're going to live together. And just saying all this super aggressive shit, I was just like, please don't. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not even, I'm not even home. So please don't. And so as I'm driving now, that's what happened throughout the night. As I'm driving home from Seattle to my place, Jordan's passed out in the back of the lack. Jared's on the side, hella pissed because he didn't get to bang this one broad when he, when our friend who gets all the pussy bangs every broad, and he was like mad about that. And I tell him like, Jr., 
uh, the girl from Craigslist, she's at our house. Like she, she's called me and she told me that she drove from Linwood. Um, she has clothes. She's going to stay with us. She's at the house and she's not leaving. And JR went into immediate, like Chuck Norris, let's kick some ass mode. Like he was pissed. He's like, if, if this girl is at my house, I'm going to kill her. And all, like yelling, screaming. I knew he was just really, really drunk, but he was on one. But he's all big on the whole, you know, don't let anybody fuck with my property type of thing. And so he was, he was heated. So we pull up, parked right in front of our house is, is the fucking car. Like she's there. We're like, what the fuck? So pull up. J.O., not J.O.'s in the back. J.R. gets up and is just like, get the, hey, get the fuck out here. Come and see me. Like, fucking King Kong status in the middle of the street in the cul-de-sac at like 3 in the morning. And <laughs> he's just like, he's yelling. I'm looking. I'm like, I'm not even seeing anybody there. J, uh, J, uh, J.R.'s yelling so loud that the neighbors, like, wake up and, like, call the police. And so, um, like, I see the neighbors, and I'm, I'm completely sober, and I'm like, hey, sorry, guys, no, no, we're, this, everything will be cool, everything will be cool. And um, so, JR goes up to the car that she's in, and there's no one in the car, and he immediately starts yelling, and he starts kicking the car. He starts, like, rampaging mode on the car. Like, he tried to wrestle away the antenna, and it wouldn't, it just wouldn't wrestle away. And he's like pulling off the license plate thing and just beating up the car. The cops come. He's done beating up the car because I told him, hey, the fucking 5 0 are on the way. Um, so the cops walk in the back. In the back, there's hella um, stuff from the from the garage sale thing. So, like, this looks fucking weird. Um, and they come around, and the guy's little microphone on the thing. He goes, uh, can we get a run on that plate? So they ran the plates and the thing. And the car belonged to the next door neighbors. It was the next door neighbor's daughter who went to Washington State University, drove all the way back from Washington State University to be with her parents for the weekend, and was so tired from her long trip that she just left her laundry in the car. So JR, in a drunken rage, fucking went rampage mode, cost a $4,000 worth of damage to the neighbor's car. Now, luckily, JR was able to take care of it. And that was just a drunken thing we talk about sometimes on Sundays. Uh, when we're amongst friends, we have a good laugh. I don't know. That's why maybe I think I understand these TV shows like with a, like I, How I Met Your Mother with a group of friends. Because it's just like you're just telling stories of your life and just life experiences that you've gone off of. And some of them, they're stranger than any type of fiction you could have come up with. So, <laughs> ah, JR. All right, guys. Sunday Chill Commentary. Peace. <laughs>what's up guys Sunday chill commentary and um, I just saw two movies and um, this is kind of going along the same lines of the uh, uh, last Sunday chill commentary a walk in the park <laughs> uh, I thought it was just a very nice name for that anyways um, I watched two movies recently I went and saw the Harold and Kumar in 3d which is awesome because they made fun of 3d and um, Spoiler, uh, at one part, Neil Patrick Harris is like massaging a girl and he's really, he's pretending to be gay, but he's really straight. And so in the movie, I guess he's, so he's a gay person pretending to be gay, pretending to be, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, so he's like massaging the girl and at one point he like, he spits on her. Like he just like lets hell spit fall out of his mouth onto her back and he starts like rubbing it in and stuff and it's just like. I was watching this in the movie theater, and I started dying. I was laughing my ass off. And it was really funny because, like, I could tell that there there was only maybe, like, one or two people in the theater that found it funny. And I was one of them, and the other person was right next to me. And so that was kind of an awkward moment. But still, fuck it. It's fu- if it's funny, if it's funny, that's all. That's all I want to get at it. And also... And I thought the spit was over. I'm watching this movie Due Date, which is hilarious. I haven't finished the whole thing because, like, it's an HBO movie. So when I watch the HBO movie, what I do is I catch, like, 45 minutes at a time. So I normally catch the middle. And then, like, in a couple days, I'll see it again and be like, oh, cool. It just started. So I'll, I'll watch it. But then, like, I've already seen the middle. Then I'll come back to it. And then I'll watch the end. So um, that's just the weird way that I watch movies. Well, not HBO. But uh, Harold and Kumar was funny. In the Due Date, the... <coughs> 
at one point he just goes off. He just goes off on uh, uh, Galifianakis, and uh, he goes on this big speech, this rant. And I love rants, man. Rants are awesome when a good rant is awesome. Um, but uh, <laughs> he tells all this stuff, and there's a dog in, a, in with one of those braces, and he spits on the dog. And if it, <laughs> I was just like, it was the, the sprinkle on the top. It wasn't like the best thing about it was he spit on the dog. It was just that perfect rant at the end. It's like, good day to you, sir. Um, <laughs> I used to work at the when I used to work at the bar. There was this uh, one bartender, uh, this female bartender, and she was kind of like sassy, you know. And uh, for whatever reason, she near the end, like someone, um, <laughs> there was this lady in there, and this guy was talking to this other guy, and he's just like, "Oh, you dating her?" And he's like, "Yeah." He's just like, "Be careful, bro." Puffy vagina. <laughs> <laughs> and she overheard it and thought it was the funny thing. He's like, wait a second. So what you're saying is you just said that she had a puffy vagina? Get out of here. You're done. <laughs> a puffy vagina to you, sir. And then it became like this ongoing like inside joke. Like, and a puffy vagina to you. But um, that's not what I want to talk about on this Sunday Chill. What I want to talk about is November Fest. It's something I've, I've claimed. Uh, there's October Fest, which I... Along the same lines with movies, I remember my first experience with Oktoberfest and the only experience is watching National Lampoon's um, European Vacation. And uh, I love Chris- and European and Christmas Vacation is a staple of December Fest of the Christmas time. I guess there's no such thing as December Fest; it's Christmas time. But November Fest for us gamers, what it is, it's the new Call of Duty. Now, I got it early. If you're mad about that, sorry, whatever. I got it early because I love Call of Duty. And in a couple days, there's going to be, you know, you'll be able to go to your Best Buys, your GameStops, or whatever, wherever you pick up your games. Some people got it early. Some people are going to have to wait in line at midnight release. I'm going to the midnight release. It's going to be, and if you're watching this now, and be like, I really want to see Blade, and you live in Washington State, um, I'm going to be at the Bellevue uh, Best Buy in Washington. And so I'm gonna be there for the midnight release, and gonna buy, and gonna get the PS3 and the Xbox. I'm gonna play on both. Don't you worry. I started on PS3. I played uh, Black Ops on the Xbox for the connection. <clears throat> there you go. Uh, during November Fest, man, we uh, Call of Duty guys, we play the hell out of some Call of Duty. When I've never been to an October Fest, but what they do is they basically they're like. They they drink a lot of beer and I don't I'm not I'm not a beer guy I don't really I don't really dig the beer I'm I'm a I'm a shots kind of guy if I do go out I like to get shots I'm not going to the midnight release drunk just so you know um, it's not a beer guy but I can see how they they kind of go hard for a month and during this time like I, I I've seen a lot of stuff on like Facebook they'll be like oh model you know the new Call of Duty comes out you know no time worst time for the girlfriend or some shit like that it's just like it's really weird because I'm like a really, I'm a social person. I'm like, I'm, you know, I have lots of friends. We always hang out. And, um, I, I got my over three and I was playing the hell out of it, but I was still like kicking with, with friends. And I was just like, man, I really should, you know, during this month, I, you know, I, I know it's unhealthy to, to not do social things, but like for the month of November, especially since, I've positioned my life in such a way to make Call of Duty part of my life. For the month of November, I thought I had planned on just cracking out to the game. And what I realized was is that I can't crack out to a game anymore. I can play it a bunch, but I can't play for like eight straight hours. I can't do it. I don't think it's healthy. My eyes hurt. Um, and it just, you get in the autopilot mode and... It's better just, and I, and I was thinking about, I was, I was sitting there because I had gotten a phone call and my buddy was like, hey, you, you try to see the Harold and Kumar tonight in 3D? And my panic response was like, fuck yeah, let's go see it, you know? But then I was like, you know what though, I, I really need to dedicate some time to, to ranking up on the Modern Warfare 3 because I want to, you know what I mean? I want to have, I'm trying to get Ninja. And it, I, I just, I just kind of took a step back. I was like, wait a second, even though... This is that November Fest. This, even though this is the play a lot of Call of Duty month because the new game's out. And I love Call of Duty. I love Call of Duty 4. She was the she was my first love. Uh, World at War. She was like the goth emo chick you banged when you were blacked out. 
Uh, Modern Warfare 2 was the super hot chick that you know thought was too hot for you, but she fucked all your friends and she did, had a drug habit and she was just too much. She was just a rage inducing. And then Black Ops is what everyone wanted, but then once we got it, we said that's boring. So I don't dislike Black Ops. Um, the new games come out. I was going to do the whole, uh, this was my last and final uh, Black Ops game, but that's not the case because just like COD 4, just like World at War every once in a while, Modern Warfare 2, maybe not Modern Warfare 2 anymore, but just like the other previous Call of Duty games, like previous relationships, you can always kind of go back to it. And uh, there's things that we hate about it and things we love about it. We tend to forget the things we hate about it. And um, <clears throat> even during the time uh, when I should be cracking out to the game, I still have to be social so I don't have to be social just it's just in my nature to kind of keep a balance so even though we're gonna go hard with Modern Warfare 3 coming out let's still keep a balance and let's not get into dungeon mode too bad <laughs> only as you play this is your Sunday chill commentary see you in Modern Warfare 3 What's up, guys? Only Use Me Blade, and we are enjoying some Modern Warfare 3 together, aren't we? Um, this is Modern Warfare 3, PS3, knife only, search and destroy. There's going to be some super fast mode parts, but I'm not going to super fast mode, ah, because that's one of the rules of Sunday Chill Commentary, you know? It's just, I don't know. I wonder if there's, like, offices where, you know, that would be really cool if there there's they call it water cooler talk you know and what that is is like so let's say you're at an office and you are using you know you're talking about what happened a lot of times they talk you know everyone talks about a show and i noticed that a lot of good shows that come out on thursdays because then people go to work on fridays and fridays is like the bullshit day i don't know fridays is always the bullshit day at, at, at offices and at work and i i kind of worked in in a in an office um had this job uh, where I used to uh, deliver kitchen cabinets, and it was, a, it was a cool job. You know, it was actually it was I I was overpaid for what I was doing, but I you know I was constantly in the in the showroom and in the office area where all the designers are. Um, you know what I mean? We go in there, we find out what our what jobs we do, and then we drive down probably like a couple blocks down to the warehouse where they keep all the cabinets and we would, you know, unload trucks and do stuff like that. And, um, it was, it was an interesting job, man. Like I actually really, really did like that. One thing that, one thing that was weird about it is like the, there's a, my homeboy, Mike, he, uh, I got him a job working there with me and he couldn't deal with it. Like he just didn't, enjoy the downtime there's hella downtime and i was cool with downtime i was like okay we can do, i'm really good at not doing anything so <laughs> like i'm i'm down to, to kill time you know and there was a lot always lots of downtime and he his anxiety wasn't good but now like fast forward a bunch of years i got you know i worked with him at i worked with him at the bar when i was a bouncer and i I don't make a ton of money on this YouTube thing. Don't I don't want you to think that I'm just balling out of control. Um, just because I don't, I just, it's just not the case. You know what I mean? Like it's a niche thing. It's Call of Duty. I only knife, and sometimes I say stupid shit. Like sometimes I say stuff like, you know, f Minecraft, and I want to fuck a chick with Parkinson's. You know, <laughs> um, but I couldn't sit there at work anyway. I couldn't just sit there and just, you know, get paid at the end of the night because it was just like, you messed it up, you know. I don't know. I just, I got old and I, I, I put in my notice and I quit, you know, which is weird because I had actually, like, gone through a bunch of things in order to get that job back. So, I don't know. I just, I've been thinking a lot lately about, about doing, like, some, some, like, part-time work, doing something else and, and not for the money. Like, the beautiful part about this YouTube thing is it allows me, you know, I feel like I, I got an inheritance. That's how, that's how I feel with this YouTube stuff. I feel like it's an inheritance because, like, I was doing this for free and now I'm getting paid for it, but it's, and it's fun. So, you know, obviously I could put out more videos, but I want to make sure that they're all good, you know. Uh, but I've been thinking about, the nice thing about when I used to work at the bar was it was something to break up the monotony of the week. 
Like, they're, you know, I never have anything on, like, someone said that they want to get me a, a, like, a, a day planner or a scheduler or some shit like that. I'm like, I have an iPhone, and what would be on my planner? I'm going to wake up, have some coffee, play some Call of Duty, kick it with some friends. Like, that's pretty much what's been going on, and it's been, like, a permanent, like, I feel like I'm on vacation. Like, doing this YouTube stuff feels like I'm... I'm like unemployed and I know I'm not unemployed. It's just, it just, you know, man kind of needs the ability to go out and to, you know, and to work. So, um, that being said, I, th I'm going to start looking for work, but I have this, I have this thing where if I do get a job, I'd still be doing the YouTube stuff. You know what I mean? Like the, 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 the YouTube video is obviously prevalent. Um, but just to break up the monotony, to, just to do something, and I don't know. I think, I think that's kind of what needs to happen for my own sanity. Because, you know, for the last couple months or whatever, I, I haven't been working. Like I quit my job, you know, and uh, now it's getting to that point where you know, shit's boring. <laughs> and I don't know I think it's kind of killed the soul a little bit and I think that it showed in the videos so I don't know but also if I do end up getting a job I think it would probably be a situation where uh, working's for schmucks I don't know just some things that I'm thinking about and I hope you guys enjoyed your Sunday chill commentary only as you blade peace What's up, guys? Always you, Blade. This is your Sunday chill commentary. Um, I think this has become... Is this become a standard for you? Is it something you accustomed to? Or are you just like, yes? You know, you get surprised. I know I've done things where I say I don't do Sunday chill commentaries, you know, every single Sunday. I try to do them every single Sunday. I try to make sure that that's a, a, a planned thing. But also at the same time, I know some of them are broke record. I'm not going to do it if it's not good. So... And that's just my standard. I knew I'd work that in perfectly. <clears throat> that's just my standard. So, like, standards are funny because, like, a lot of times we make fun of other people's standards. And I can't tell you what standards that you have. And I'm talking about with anything. Everything that you do, every decision you make is, is, based, off, is based off your standards of yes or no. Like, what are the qualifying definitive things that you need to process in order to be like... Yes, that's a good idea, I'm in. Or no, that's a horrible idea, fuck you. Just, you know, obviously you don't solve problems that way. But, you know, everything is kind of based off standards. Like when I used to work for, um, I don't want to say the company, but when I used to do, you know, home theater installations, um, I used to work with these dudes that were like, <clears throat> they were like these like stereo hipsters, kind of. I don't want to say, actually, no, hipsters are not good because that has to do with time. They're more like stereo snobs. And, um, you know, they would, they would say something like, they would ask me like, what, what speakers I have? And I'd be like, I know some stereo heads out there who's going to look this up, but I'm like, I have the JBL L sevens and I'm running a Marantz amp. And they'd be like, what's the speaker wire you're running with? I'm just like, uh, I'm running these audio quests for, I forgot like the Q series or something like that. I don't remember. And, um, they're like, well, how could you listen to that? I'm like, whoa, whoa, what do you mean? Like, it, it sounds really good. And, uh, what I realized was like their standards for what they listen to, like they're constantly is weird because there's like our standards change along our drive. Does that make sense? Like if you have a drive to be successful, like a lot of people have like this drive for money or uh, a drive for status or a drive for fulfillment or whatever your drive is that pretty much gets you up and gets you motivated or whatever the reasoning behind you doing what you do as far as being a successful person and you know along that line your standards change everyone's standards change like the standard for a a lady friend now at the age of 29 is way different than it was at 18 you know the um 
like here's a good example uh and this this is just a basic one that's going to apply to most people right uh remember when hd like remember your first first hd television and this is another thing that pisses me off there's a lot of people that get these hd televisions they don't even have set up right um but uh <laughs> like actually I, f I find that it's a very very annoying habit that when i go to people's houses i've i, I kind of look at their little their setup you know I look at their setup and just kind of poke my head back there, make sure they got the right connections, because um, you're only as good as your connections when it comes to stuff like that. And and uh, I, which is really rude though, because imagine if, imagine if the roles were reversed. Like if someone came in my house and started looking at my at my setup, I call it the setup because it's every dude that's into like electronics has like a setup, right? If if some dude would come in and start like looking behind and looking at my setup, I'd be like, what are you doing back there, bro? That's my playground. Stop that. You know? <laughs> and, but I do it to other people. I more so do it to people who I think wouldn't give a shit or care. And that's a horrible generalization because like I could do that to someone who actually did their research or actually stays up on that kind of stuff, you know? Or they just don't care and i'm just like dude we can totally fix this we can make this better and it's funny that you know i would be like you know that's like someone like i hate when people sit you know come in the car and they're like hey rev up the engine i'm just like okay dude you pay for the gas <laughs> but they they're just like you know let's just listen let's listen to it you know and um and so i rev it up they're like dude we can so do this and this and this the engine i'm like that's that's not me bro that's that's not that's not my that's not you know that's not what I do. That's, I don't, I'm not into modifying the engine like that. It's just not my thing. You know, people are just like, dude, you had all, you know, you modify the stereo when you put a grill in the front and this and that. And I'm just like, yeah, because that's, that's my standard is I can't be in a car on a daily basis without, without good music. I can't do it. Or just, or, it, you know. Even if it didn't have good music, at least at least if it was like clean music and I had like an iPod connection, you know, you know when you get into, I think that um, Sirius satellite radio, I think that that's sold probably double because of rental cars. Because every rental car you get into, you you see that the, you have a satellite radio and it might not be in your current car. Okay, so like one one little trip with Sirius satellite radio, you're like I'm fucking hooked. I'm not hooked enough though because I haven't decided like I wanted to get that and. The only, one of the main reasons that I don't really want to get it is because um, of the car wash. Like, I don't want it to, I don't want the antenna to get fucked up in the wash. So, I don't know. My standards for the next place I move to, I've always told people this. I'm like, I'm liking where I'm at right now. But the, the next place that I move to is probably going to be my last stop. And there's certain standards there's certain checklist points that i want to keep at you ever gone to auto trader and wanted to look for a specific car and you put in all those different variables and it's like nope nothing that's kind of what is kind of going on like i i used to live out on a house on a water on the water on a lake and it was perfect because it was like the perfect combination like i i think water water is soothing and water is like needed you know like i think i even started this commentary i don't think i did i think i was on the other tribe but like you know with <laughs> one standard i have is that you know when i'm sometimes i if i don't actually sleep in my house it happens sometimes sometimes i go you know you know go out to other places and i end up sleeping at other people's house places people have crashed here before not a big i don't know why i'm defending it like that but um you know it becomes a situation where like I'm at the house and like one standard that I've gotten accustomed to just like you've probably gotten accustomed to like a HD TV, you know, is I, I need to have fresh water and you know, people can live off tap. I don't want to call me, you know, call me whatever. I've had people say, dude, you kind of have a, a, an arrogance about you or like you talk as if you're, you're better than everyone else. And I'm like, no, that's not it. It's just I've accumulated certain standards, ways I want to be, and ways that I am. And I'm going to be me. But, you know, I don't drink tap water. Suck my dick. So <laughs> so I've actually thought about, like, dude, I want to leave this house. I want to go back to my house and get tap water, you know. I like, 
I like being in a comfortable my own home surroundings. That's why I'm finding myself looking at stuff like Bed Bath Beyond more just because I like nice, comfortable shit. Like, why not? And just, you know, just, just the standards I've raised. So, the when I actually end up getting a house, right? It's going to be one of those situations where it's going to have... To, there's going to be a lot of checkpoints made. Because don't you hate when you get something and it's like, oh, fuck this. And I want, I'd rather have had that. And like the whole grass is always greener. Yeah, it is. But if you really do your research, you can find the greenest of grass. And you know that there's greener grass out there. But you're like, no, I don't, I don't need the kingdom. I need my own little humble abode. So, you know, that's with anything. And that's with, uh, you know... When I was going to do standards, I was going to talk about standards of YouTube, but that's stupid. Like, you know, that's dumb. Because I read a Facebook... I remember it was really funny because I was looking about standards of YouTube and this and that. Like, oh, what's a YouTube standard for your video? It's just like, whatever. Um, I think you need to set your own standards and other people can look at you and go, oh, his standards are this, this, and this, and this, and this. You know? Like... I was driving with this, um, I was driving with this lady friend and we pull up and there's a fucking, um, a hamster. There's a hamster in a cage by a dumpster. And she was like, oh my God, I can't believe someone just would leave a hamster out like that. I'm like, yeah, that's messed up. It's rainy. Roll up the car with us. And she's just like, stop the car. And I'm like, okay, so stop the car. We're in like an AM PM parking lot. She goes out and she grabs it. And puts it in the back seat. And she's like, we got to go back to my house. We need to put this in my house. Because this, is, this isn't right. And I'm just like, wow. You didn't even think of that. Like, you didn't even contemplate that. You just, just went right for it. She's like, yeah, that's fucked up. That's a living thing, you know. And so, her standard of if she sees a hamster in a cage by a PM, her initial response was like, okay, we're going to grab it. We're going to take it home. And I'm just like, damn. I wouldn't do that. I I wouldn't do it like there's lots of you know that's like saying every time you see a bum you give a bum money no I'm not doing that all the bums would hit me up but her standard of of in a situation I think I think what it is a lot of times you need to see what how people react to certain situations I don't and I don't mean test them because you can't test people that's fucked up but like as you get to know them over time seeing how they would react to certain situations that right there is a judge of character and that's like some people talked about character is is what people do when no one's looking. Well, I don't know about that because character is more of a you know it's, I think it's how other people perceive you. Does that make sense? Because like I think if you do something because you want other people to perceive perceive you in a certain way, that's kind of fucked up. Like that and doesn't work because you're not going to do that consistently. You're not going to do that all the time. Does that make sense? I think that the the standards and the way that you live, it fully depends on on you and your life and you know your life intake and how you want to be. You know what I mean? Like one of my standards is a girl has to have a large chest. I'm sorry. Call me a, a male asshole, unsub, get pissed off. I'm sorry, but like for a female companion, we're we're not in the fucking Harry Potter movie, okay? We're not in middle school writing love fucking letters here. We're in the real world. And part of a female relationship is sex. And in order for me to have sex, I have to be sexually interested. And I'm not sexually interested in flat-chested chicks. Now, does that make it wrong? Does that make it fucked up? Does that to think about a companion? I'm like, I got lots of companions. I got lots of people that... I fucking chop it up with and I, you know, we talk and conversate and we enlighten each other that way. But as far as like a relationship relationship, there's sex involved. There needs to be penetration. There needs to be fucking. That's not all it's about, but that's a part of it. So that, that kind of dissects the whole, why I don't, I don't talk to a cuppers, you know? I mean, I'm just a, a swell guy. <laughs> but see, that that's the thing, though. Like, when we, we talk about stuff like that, you t- you can take it completely out of context and you can be like, oh, Blade, 
play that's fucked up, you know? And sometimes I kind of tickle with that emotion where I, I literally try to get your attention and I say some fucked up shit just to, just to invoke a reaction, see how you do it, you know? Like, a lot of times people like asking you questions like how, you know, <laughs> if you were in this situation, I'm like, stop. A, I'm not in that situation, so I can't honestly say. And B, you know, isn't that what it's about? It's about finding out what you do in certain situations, I think that's kind of what part of life is, is like, you know, you ever see a kid and be like, dude, he is going to have a rough life because he doesn't know how to deal with situations even at a, at a young age. So, or you can see people and see how they interact and see how, how people handle things. You'd be like, okay, that person's going to do well. The standard is, is this, you know, I've never seen him go, go down. You know what I mean? Keeping up a good track record, um, always doing what you're going to say, that's important, um, just so people know where your standards are at. And if you think about it, your standards a lot of times are for other people. They're so other people know what your situation is. So my standards is like, you know, I've kind of grown accustomed to certain things. I aspire for some things, but I also realize that I'm not going to have a penthouse suite on top of the Empire State Building or something. I don't know. Like, I'm not going to have insane shit like that, but I definitely want to be near some water. What's up, guys? Sunday Chill Commentary. Only as you blade, you know I had to kind of come at you. And I had a little bit of a um, kind of party a little bit this weekend. And uh, it got old. It just it got old. I think, like, in the moment, it's amazing. And that's what that's one thing about uh, partiers is that, or anybody that's chasing, like, I don't want to say drugs, but, like, chasing highs, you know? Like, I think that a lot of people that play Call of Duty we're kind of junkies like we we do it to chase the high to get that perfect game we've talked i've talked about that before so i'm not gonna dwell on that but like lately i feel like i've been winning but losing does that make sense and i'm not actually appreciating the journey i'm more like focused on the finish line but not taking in the scenery kind of thing and there are certain moments that it's everything's kind of built up for one certain moment. You could spend thousands of dollars on preparation for one moment. And I know that sounds a little silly or a little crazy, but that's that's honestly got truth. Like, um, just the everything's kind of a build up to a moment, and that's just kind of what you're doing. Like everything leads up to one thing, and like a good example like i remember i think it was like a month ago i did a video and i was talking about how i um took a road trip or whatever to kind of clear my head and you know if you it's kind of like those visa mascar commercials where they say hey you know uh, a hot dog at a baseball game a catcher's mitt a, a hand and you know, a moment with your son, it's this fucking priceless, uh, I don't want, <sighs> and it's just like priceless, you know, and that is, it is kind of, it's sappy and it's shitty and as stupid as that sounds, that is kind of true, because the, um, you know, the moments, you know, all, you might do a, a lot, like, okay, so, have you ever been at, I know a lot of my viewers are sometimes younger, so I'm going to say school or, you know, they've been at work. Like, let's say work is is a better analogy for me because I've been in school in a long ass time. But like, let's say you go to work, right? When you go to work and as soon as you get there, you just don't like it, right? Well, what I've learned is that, let's say it's eight hours. 
eventually those eight hours will be up. Even though you're staring at the clock and you're bored and you hate you're hating life at that particular moment, uh, the eight hours is eventually going to be up and then you're going to be off. And that moment when you uh, get... In, there's Okay, there's two moments that I love. The moment when you get in the car and start the car and that, that little click when you take it from... You know, when you take it from park to reverse, obviously you're gonna you're, you're gonna go. You might take it from park to drive or whatever, but just that click, you know, I'm out this bitch. That moment is amazing. That moment is surreal. I love it. You know, a little that swag when they finally, you know, at my bar, like they they pay me, and I'm just like, I'm out this bitch. Let's go. And I walk out to the car. That moment when you click the transmission and you drive and you're like gone. And then that moment when. I throw my keys on the counter and sit down on my couch when I finally get home. That moment is amazing. And another thing that pisses me off is when you actually do get home and you, you just want to sit on the couch, you want to relax. And I know it sounds silly, but like um, video games, like playing Call of Duty isn't relaxing. It's not like, oh, I'm going to go soothe myself and I'm going to play some Call of Duty. It's going to be fun. No, I'm trying to murder shit. You know, I'm trying to kill. And that's what, and I, you know what, I honestly think that that is a, a positive thing to try to have something to take aggression out of. I don't really have anything I'm mad about, but I still have to take, you know, everyone has aggression, you know what I mean? And I think like a lot of people say, oh, Call of Duty's rage inducing this and that, just like, that's good though. That makes that, that those endorphins, I think everyone needs to have a little bit of rage come out of them. I think there's appropriate times, but also there's the thing where the I, you know, people say, I don't care. I don't care. I think we all do care though sometimes, whether we like to say it or not. And I think the, um, I think the ability to care is also contingent of, all right, I'll give you a good example. And I'm going to use Call of Duty as a reference. Call of Duty 4, right? Everything had a counter to it, Okay. Now, for me, the class that I always used was Bomb Squad, UAV Jammer, Extreme Conditioning, okay? And so it got to that point where it was just like, whatever you want to throw at me, I'm going to counteract it, okay? If you want to put up some Claymores, I'm going to see your bombs. If you want to throw up a UAV to see my position, you're not going to find me. You want to poop out a martyrdom grenade? Tough shit, because I'm going to run away from it. So... It got to this point where I could stop worrying about the mechanics of the game. I, you could stop worrying about the rules and, and stop worrying about that. And so at that point, you're not even playing against the game. You're just playing against the people. And so then I get, once, once that is aligned up, I get like Neo from the Matrix mode on them. Where I feel that I can see their steps before they do them. Like, I can predict what they're going to do, and I'm playing at a, at a faster, better rate than everyone else on the battlefield. It's, it's that point where you're not discouraged by the game, whether it be life or Call of Duty. I know I'm making, I make that analogy a lot, but to get to that, to that Neo moment <laughs> when you're just like, nope, nothing can phase me. I'm just doing me. And that that's and that's an awesome moment. That's that's a stellar moment when, and so I think like uh, over the years I've noticed more and more people are complaining about the games or you know complaining about the Call of Duty series. Oh, I'm going to go to Battlefield or or anything like that. And the only reason I'm even talking about I know I know said I wouldn't talk about Call of Duty during a Sunday chill, but I'm watching Call of Duty right now and. I'm, I admit it, I've fallen into that let's bitch about Call of Duty territory a lot, but at the same time, you know, the golden rule of Call of Duty is it's cool to do it it's sh shitty when it happens to you. But uh, I think that we play it just because there are those moments when we can go Rambo. Where are those moments when we can go Sandy Ravage? Um, it's just It just gets that moment where you're not even thinking about what you're doing, you're just doing it and you're you're the king of the world at that moment. Think about it. when we we work so hard and we put put so much time and energy to possibly have moments where we don't care. 
like a lot of times people talk about going to the beach or whatever like that or they want to like you know people travel i was talking to someone someone was like saying i want to go to mexico i want to travel to mexico and i want to just get drunk and shitty in tijuana and i'm like can't you just do that here and they're like no but it's the experience you know it's that it's that moment that is priceless I know I'm I'm super way off track, but remember when I was talking earlier about that road trip? Um, I took that little road trip or whatever. You know, there was money for gas. There was you know whatever future I'm gonna stuff I'm gonna have to put into the car for going on a road trip. You know, who knows transmission fluid? I don't know whatever. Um, you know, obviously time spent and this and that. But like, there was a moment when I had Sade playing, and there was an outro part of Sade. And normally when I listen to my stereo, I listen to it at about 20. But um, but actually, no, I listen to it like in the morning or if I'm just like driving to the store and I don't want to piss anybody off, I'm just, I just have it at 10. And then like if I really want to just really, really bump something, put it at 20. I had this at 35. So that's just frame reference. There you go. Bam. And uh, it was it was loud. The person in the car with me wasn't saying anything. And we we got lost in the moment. Like honestly, it's it's one of those things where you kind of like, where you kind of like, oh shit, that just happened. Like almost like a, an outer body experience. And so, I don't know. Like a lot of times we we get mad about monetary stuff or or what it costs to do this. I'm not talking about financially, but I'm talking about what it costs. You know, physically, emotionally, whatever. We go through all these things to finally get that point to experience some magical moment where all the other stuff doesn't matter you're on your you're in your own little world like we try so hard to be part of this world but at the same time we want to set it up to the point where nothing else matters at that particular moment and uh i think that's great but also at the same time man like lately uh the things i've been doing partying, um, kicking it, uh, people I choose to associate myself with, whatever, I f- I, I'm not experiencing those moments, and when I do experience those moments, they're not as fulfilling, so, just, you know, time for a change, I go through this every year around this time, and uh, luckily, uh, I'm gonna travel, so, there you go, guys, Only as You Blade, Sunday Chill Commentary, um, I don't know, just make sure that you... Set yourself up to have that moment, but also make sure you enjoy that moment, whatever your moment may be, and get your Neo Zen on. All right, peace and buckries. Kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the Sunday Chill Commentary by Unleashed We Blade. Let's kick it. Let's kick it. Cod 4 style. And God damn it, Sunday Chill Commentary needs to be Cod 4 It needs to be the Call of Duty 4. All right. So, if you ever taken a trip, just to kind of go get there, completed a long journey, a long task, lots of tedious things, and you go... And now what? Where do we go now? The um, the song by, uh, I think it's Guns N' Roses, uh, Where Do We Go Now? Little tidbit, that actually came from, um, he was singing a song, which is basically a poem about his daughter. And uh, Axel and um, the other dude or whatever, they're just in the studio and they're just kind of strumming their basses and their guitars and they're going... Where do we go now? Where do we go now? They just didn't know where to... Um, it's weird because like we're, we're so focused on taking these journeys that it's it's this weird thing because we go... We take this journey and then when we get to the end of the journey, I'm like, now what? And then, like, what do we do now? And then you kind of go, well the the fun was the journey you know what i mean like that that's that's what was entertained about it was that we needed to actually be there and the actually the, the trip was the adventure not the goal you know what i mean 
It's kind of like people, you know, you see these like old movies or whatever where people are going on these treasure hunts, but the actual treasure is the hunt itself. Does that make sense? But what about when you actually complete it? Now you kind of go, what now? The reason why I'm saying this is because uh, the other night I was thinking about this, and there was a there was a direct correlation um, between the game, the Grand Theft Auto, San Andreas, and Call of Duty 4. I'm going to make it a little comparison, but I'm also going to make there's one glaring defect in it. So let me just explain my obsession with Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. I like the first Grand Theft Auto 3. I liked Vice City a lot more because it was visually pleasing. And San Andreas was one of my favorite games of all time. Now, as I played it and as I beat it, I was like, okay, well, let's go for 100% completion. Because I still like this game and I want to have a reason to keep on playing it. But there's this thing where, like, once I've completed it, I don't necessarily want to play anymore. Like, I always want to be ranking up or building a character or whatever at least that's how i used to play and um so with san andreas i i beat the game and then i kind of go well what do we what do we do at this point um because at the time there was no multiplayer i know they have multiplayer on the pc version but i was playing on the original xbox and uh so i got 100 percent completion now there wasn't exactly fun doing that but it gave me something to do it's just like i want a reason to continue playing this game but they play in the game just to play it without like you know building something or having something to show for or whatever I wasn't really into that but I wanted to have a reason to do it so I got the little book uh, the Bradley book and it showed me how to you know how to get all the oysters and how to do all the side missions do everything and I remember I finally got I remember it was it was a spray tag I got my final spray tag and I sprayed it on the wall and you know it made the little and it said 100% completion I think it was like double health and cars all have nitrous and they take more damage or something and I was just I was just standing there and I was just like all right this is kind of eerie like this is just weird because there's literally nothing else in the game you could do Besides just, you know, run amok and shoot some shit. And I remember just this really weird feeling. I'm like, that's it? Like, I, I felt accomplished or whatever. But at the same time, I was like, that's that's it. Like, I, I beat it. I'm done. And it was like an empty feeling inside. And I remember like three days after it happened, I... I was doing something where I started a new game because I wanted to watch a certain cutscene and then I saved over it and so I lost my 100% completion game on San Andreas and I was furious I was pissed dude like I was so I was I was so mad at but then like I'd say like a month later as I'm going through it again and I found myself enjoying myself I realized that I think subconsciously I needed to start over again because I was still addicted. I still love the game. And um, I don't love too many games, but that was one game I loved. And I needed a reason to play it again. So I I did 100% completion again. So I completed Grand Theft Auto San Andreas twice 100% completion. And then... I still got that same feeling like I love this game, uh, but I need to be ranking up. I need to be doing something in order for me to do it. Like I, I feel like the amount of time that I spent on the game, it needed to be towards something and not just, just to play randomly or just to shoot some stuff. And I learned later that, that my buddies, when they played San Andreas, they just beat the game and then got all the gear and then used cheat codes so that they can just replenish their armor and their weapons real quick and try to go on merc missions and that's fun don't get me wrong but i think subconsciously i wanted to re recomplete that game because i still liked it and uh so i i don't know if that's exactly the reason but i think like deep down inside there was a subconscious thing that said okay let's 
Let's let's restart this. Let's do it all over again. And uh, then let's fast forward a little bit to Call of Duty Four. Now, when actually let's not fast forward. So I I basically was at this point where I realized that I was playing San Andreas way too much and it was unhealthy. Anything in abundance is unhealthy, right? So what I wanted to do was is I was like, dude, I need to I need to get back to being like a social person and not just some guy that just sits and plays shit ton of video games and I'm talking about like that's a time consuming endeavor getting hundred percent completion in San Andreas. So I took my Xbox, took my copy of San Andreas and I went to a GameStop and sold it to him. I think I got like maybe 70 bucks total. And I was just like, I, I need to be done with this. I can't, I, I don't want this in my house. And so then I started, you know, basically being social again. And I, I know it sounds really ridiculous to say that, but like I started being, um, started being social again with, with, with my friends and stuff like that. And, and I, you know, again, that voyage of uh, that started like my drinking voyage that voyage i quickly realized was like whoa back the fuck up like even with that i was like where do we go like you reach that point and like if you guys have ever seen the movie scarface the the part where he's just like is this what it's all about i don't want this you know i can't believe this shit all we're doing is just getting fucked up all the time and so you you come to that kind of drinking epiphany and uh, my buddy's roommate got a PS3, and uh, we started playing Call of Duty 4, and I fell in love with the video game again. Simple as that. I started my own personal account. I played on that, mostly headquarters, shoot an account. Then I got to 10th Prestige, and I was just like, man, what do I, what do I do? Like, I, I've completed everything, and I got that same feeling of... We completed the voyage, and you go, and now what? And I was just like, man, this is. So I started doing the whole thing where I wasn't just I wasn't just try harding. I thought that shit was always cheesy. Like I always thought it was really weird that when people had like Red Tiger M16 and stuff like that. So I would like try different weapons and this and that. And then I started doing the knife thing, and I think I started doing the knife thing because I wanted to make a new account. And I wanted to go through those 10 levels of prestige again because I had gone through 10 levels of prestige with Call of Duty 4 shooting on the PS3. And I, I, I still love the game. And I wanted to do it again. But I felt like if I were to just keep on playing on the Gold Cross count, I feel like I'm not actually progressing. You know? And that's that's the thing about these games that are different from like the old Nintendo games where you have you couldn't even save them. Like it's it's kind of like a role playing game. It's like constant progression, and I wanted to constantly be progressing. Um, but in all actuality, what I wanted to do is I wanted a reason to play copious amounts of Call of Duty Four. Now, so we know about um, we know about the San Andreas. And how it was, you know, there were other ones in the series were cool, but that one was just amazing. And so when when a game is as amazing like that in a series, you tend to play the other games in that same series. So when Grand Theft Auto 4 came out, I got it, and I just felt that it took a lots of lots of steps backwards, and it wasn't the same as um, it wasn't the same as San Andreas and the the scenery was ugly and this I'm not trying to bash on the game but it just wasn't my cup of tea and so after playing it for a little bit I I played it enough so I can do the bank robbery missions because I thought the bank robbery missions were the best parts of of the of the um, Grand Theft Auto series but then after that I just lost interest and then it, it kind of got gay like literally gay like there was actually like a gay character in it and I was just like I'm good I'm not a homophobe but I just I just don't care to, to spend my time dealing with anything as far as like homosexuality I think it's just not my thing if you're if you're if you're a homosexual then do you but just not my thing um one thing I found interesting so is once I I played Grand Theft Auto 4 and once I found myself I didn't enjoy it I stopped playing it like a normal human being so 
fast forward to Call of Duty 4. Played the hell out of it. Literally did 100% completion twice, just the same way that I did 100% completion twice on Grand Theft Auto. But in all in all actuality, the every game since then in the Call of Duty series, I have not. Been, it hasn't captured my love the same way that Call of Duty Four did. And like. Um, they're good games, don't get me wrong. I think that the 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 people that play it, I think, kind of ruin it a little bit. But at the same time, it just wasn't that great. Now, if I don't enjoy a game, if we look at Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, and then we looked at Grand Theft Auto 4, I didn't enjoy the game, so I stopped playing it. But there's something about the Call of Duty series that I still want to play it. But um, I don't know. They made they made the game so complex that I stopped the whole prestige thing, and maybe that's why I've not liked. Um, maybe that's why I've not liked the uh, the later Call of Duties because I just don't prestige. Which um, so I don't know. I just I'm just in one of those weird places where it's just like where do where do I go from this point? You know what I mean? Like. Uh, and I think some of that has to do with like the YouTube thing. Some of it has to do with you know relationships, um, and just general life situations that we're so focused on making that journey through it that we don't actually enjoy the the finish line kind of thing. So I don't know. It's just. I've just been in a weird place lately, guys. I don't know. It's not. It has nothing to do with the the current Call of Duty game, or or the YouTube or stuff like that. Because I try to stay a little bit disconnected from the YouTube. It's just, um, I've kind of made that. I've kind of made that journey, and now I've come to a point where I'm like, and now what? Like I financially, I'm good. Uh, I have healthy relationships with my family and healthy relationships with the ladies, good friends. I like what I do, but now I'm in a place just like, what do we do now? So, I don't know. I don't know what your your journey is, person listening, but I hope that the journey is fun because it seems like every time I end my journey, I'm in a point where I'm like, well, what do I do now? Only as you blade. This has been a Sunday chill commentary. Peace. Love you. What's up, guys? Only as you blade. A little Sunday chill commentary for you, and you are not gonna see me. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. You're not gonna see me for uh, like a week. I am taking a trip over to Eastern Washington um, with a not my girlfriend. <laughs> not we're not we're not a couple, but uh, we care about each other a lot, and uh, we um, we never talked about it. And uh, thank God she doesn't watch my videos. Like we never talked about it, but we we both dig each other's company so much like as far as like friendship level and I'm not I'm not stuck in the friend zone don't worry don't you fret about that everyone's like oh you're stuck in the friend zone it's not it's not that at all uh we just um we're just both too cool for school to, to talk about that but like uh I don't know it's a it's a good little situation and um we've already like used the L word with each other uh, I don't want to screw it up. I do not want to, <sighs> there's, there's a part in the show Entourage where, um, I think it's like season one where E and, um, and Vince are talking and Vin and E wants to be Vince's manager. He's like, dude, I, I can't get rid of you as my best friend, but I can get rid of you as a manager. And I don't know why, but like. There's these certain like little snapshots 
in whether it's being you watching a TV show or like little little things that happen in your day-to-day life or whatever where your brain just kind of goes bam wait a second remember that for some reason you don't know why you should remember that you just know that you should remember that for whatever reason of all of of the eight seasons of entourage that i watched the the one thing that really fucking like there's a lot of things that resonated but like when they were outside i think it's the end of season one and i think he's they're about to go and shoot a movie or whatever or season two, I don't really remember. But they're 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 outside. They're by the plane, and uh, they're just. I don't know why that resonated with me, man. I don't know why that resonated. And there's no, there's no logic or reason to why certain things resonate. Here's a good example. So like, we had just gone. I think we had just gotten lunch or something, and we were gonna go. We went back to her house, and it was like it was sunny. And I just, like, I cracked a joke or something, and she laughed, kind of looked back, and then walked back in, and I just watched her, and I was just like, and my brain was like, oh, oh, remember that? And I'm just like, whoa, why, why do, why does our brain tell us to remember certain things? Like, really, like, focus on remembering something, even though it has no actual value. Does that make sense? I mean, there's, there's some value there, but, um... It's, I just the the brain is is weird, man. Because like I'm I'm a nutty dude. I'm 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 not I'm not wound right, guys. Let's just be completely honest. I'm not I'm not wound right. Okay, <laughs> like I got a couple screws loose. I'm a little nutty. Uh, I use that to my advantage because I think I'm charming. Um, but uh, hell insecure. And I use laughter to make up for that. Actually, I'm not really insecure. I'm like over secure. Um, my overconfidence. I don't know. But um, but yeah, like these little mental, these little mental snapshots that we have that we make that have no barrier. If if I was in school and someone a person was trying to teach you something, I would be like, whatever. You know what I mean? But like. I remember being in class, I remember being in class and seeing this girl get frightened by a spider and she jumped up and her boob hit her in the face and right when the boob like hit her in the face and it kind of like, it kind of did this thing where if you guys have ever seen the slow motion, huge blue water balloon that goes at the dude's face in slow-mo, that's like how her boob looked right on her face and I don't know, it's because I'm a perv or whatever, but like I thought my brain said, Remember that, and that image will be etched, etched in my mind forever. There's the thing that rattles me about it is it's not those little images that are etched in your mind forever. A lot of times they have no merit. They, there's nothing. There's no value to them besides like a sentimental or whatever value. You got. You know, if you if if I were to show you all of my sentimental value pictures of that are etched in my brain, right? If I were to show you all those things, you'd be like, "What the fuck is this? This is the ramblings of a madman." But it makes sense to me. I also do have to say that uh, another image. <laughs> if you guys ever see, uh, what is it? Uh, talked about this a long time ago. Uh, Metal Gear Solid or whatever. Um, the game Metal Gear Solid, there's a part where you're like, whoop! Like, if you ever get spotted by somebody, it's like, whoop! And, uh, I don't really like this, but I'm just going to be completely honest of how this works. So, me and my lady friend, we, we were going to the liquor store. We were going to buy just a little couple little bottles of something to sip on, okay? So, we're on the way. In the middle of this, I'm talking like it's a nice sunny day, windows in the lacquer down, I got the music going, I got this hot broad sitting in the passenger seat, right? And she finds me funny. So we're just like laughing, ha 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 ha, like that. And as I'm passing, I see this blue BMW. And I'm like, oh shit. And I look up, and I swear to God, that little, whoop, that little spotted thing, it was uh, my ex-girlfriend. 
and she basically I passed her she was trying to come out of a parking lot and I passed her on the main road so we made eye contact for about I say a seventh of a second like just no time at all like okay you know when you're playing a video game and you like you play search and store and you hit the little button to check your score that is and then you come back that's about how long we actually made eye contact for and I was like whoa and she was like huh and the whole time while this is happening this new lady friend in my life was just like ha 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 just having a great gay old time right and uh, I, I told her I was like whoa that was my ex right there and that image of hmm like of of my of my ex like looking at me while I'm driving and then I it was weird just to even see her see what I'm saying like I see a lot of times when people have like uh, ex-girlfriends or whatever and they like still work with them or they're like still living with them the movie The Breakup is one of the best movies ever made just, just watch it if you haven't seen it it's a great fucking movie um, just because it's so right on both levels and the video game scene is amazing I Obviously, a lot of people that watch my videos are into video games, but the video game scene, Vince Vaughn and Breakup, is fucking amazing. So, then I realized, I was like, wait a second. She just saw me with another female. I wouldn't want to, even though we're both adults, and even though... We've parted ways. Uh, I always care about her. Always. And I know she cares about me. It's it's not negative anything. Okay? But there was a small amount of, fuck, yeah! And I told, I told uh, my lady friend or whatever about it. And she was just like, and she was just like, cool, that's awesome. She's like, I wish I would have like... Wipe my mouth off like I was blowing you or something. I was like, that's why I like kicking with you. Bam. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I, I have no hard feelings towards my, uh, towards my ex at all. Like, it's super grown up. I'm not seeing her. I, we're not, like, going to the perk. Going to the park. You know what I mean? Like, we're not, we don't conversate or talk. There's no reason to. Um, you know, time heals all wounds or whatever, but, uh, I do have to admit it was pretty motherfucking cool to be, look like I was having a good time. Like it'd be worse if I was just like super down on my luck and like at the bus stop and like dirty jeans and she passed by. That'd be completely different. That'd be sad. But, um, actually, all right, since we're getting to honesty, I'm going to. I, I do kind of feel the flip side of that. So this is this is fucking weird. Uh wow, Blade's getting personal. You guys should fucking like this shit. Uh not like the thumbs up. You guys just enjoy this, but like so it was Valentine's Day. I didn't have a Valentine, whatever. Um and uh I was like even though it was my ex, still care about it. I know she still cares about me. And I had this weird idea that, and everyone ha everyone goes through this, where we kind of go, oh, you know, if, uh, you know, if I'm not with them, then they're just going to be alone forever. And obviously that's not the case. Uh, sometimes I unsubscribe to people on YouTube and just assume that their channel died. You ever do that? You ever unsub from somebody on YouTube and just assume that their just channel is just dead? Like, they just quit making YouTube videos because you unsubbed. <laughs> but, um, so, the situation was, I was just like, you know what? I know I'm not getting back with her. I know, I know that's just not in the cards. Um, but, every lady deserves something on Valentine's Day, right? So, I went out and I bought, um... Bought, bought some cheesecake, bought some flowers, bought like a card, I think. I don't think I bought a card. Um, but I was just like, you know, I'm just going to surprise her. I'm going to go over there, give her Valentine's. And I get over there, and um, her roommate's son is there. She's sitting with this dude. 
and she's not there. And I, I'm like, hello? And this dude, uh, Max, cool-ass kid, um, he he's like, no, 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 she's not here right now. And I'm like, can you give this to her? Like, this cheesecake and these flowers? He's like, yeah, sure, man. How you been? I'm like, I've been good. And then this dude, I, like, shake his hand, and I... I have a feeling that that was probably like her new, her new dude, you know, and that bummed me out. So I don't know, but then again, it doesn't. I'm both adults about it. We're both adults about it, and uh, yeah. So before I start telling you my innermost personal secret, I'm gonna end this. Um. Oh, and that's the online stopwatch. I'm using that because I feel that when you watch. Uh, if if I watch a, a, a gameplay, right, if I'm watching it, I feel that it directly affects the commentary. I.e. a slow, campy gameplay is going to make me go a little bit slower. A fast-paced gameplay, I'm going to start yelling out, sit down, this and that. But what I'm trying to do for the Sunday Chills is I'm trying to make it so that it's... Uh, how do I say this? I basically use a online stopwatch, and then I... Um, then I just use it like that and then just overlay it with the video. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Sunny Chill Commentary by Only Using Blade. Um, I'll probably see you next week. I'm, uh, I'm uh, taking a little trip, get my head right. And uh, fuck the Three Stooges. Bam! Peace and buckers. So, before I upload any video, I rewatch it to make sure that it's a good video. And if I rewatch it and it's not, then I'm like, okay, scrap it, do it again. I just noticed because I added a little extra thing at the end. My avatar looks like a fucking penis. See you next week. I'm happy being solo and solo and alone and lonely are, are different things. A lot of times, like I got a lot of friends that just, you know, I live by myself. I live in a one bedroom apartment and I like it. I like the fact that my remote is in the same place I left it. I like the fact that if I have a bunch of people over, I can just crash in my place and I got my own bed. Um, I like the fact that if I make burritos at my house and I use a spoon to scoop up the queso and put it on the burrito and there's still like queso and cheese and bacon-iness on it that I can scoop inside of the sour cream and it might have a little, you know, a little stuff left over, but no one's going to complain about that. Um, I like the fact that anytime that I want to use... Um, the restroom I know that I don't have to wait for anybody kind of get what I'm saying like I've kind of set myself up for that like I got some good friends that are in situations where they want to they want to kind of get a place together and I'm just like mm, no I've done the roommate thing and even though it seems like you know it, it seems like yeah you can save some money or whatever and you know obviously I could save some money doing that but like I honestly enjoy being solo and I enjoy being my own person and like that's why you notice like if you notice like YouTube clicks I I don't consider myself part of the community and I know people are gonna go well what the hell does that mean yes you are cuz I'm not like I'm cool with everybody but at the end of the day it's like we're kind of like we're kind of all solo beings, you know, and um, I'm cool. I'm cool with everybody. There's there's maybe one or two people that I don't like for my own personal reasons, but that's not for me to judge them or whatever. And I'm sure some people don't like me, but uh, they can eat a dick and die. So that's not really the issue. Like as far as like YouTube clicks, but I'm cool with everybody, right? And you may hear me go, you know, I like I like being solo, which is like yes, but I'm also a very social person. Like, I'm, I'm an extremely social person. Like, I always have 
people around me and so that's not the case it's just like but i've always been kind of like i've been let down before by people like i've had like uh I've had best friends that turn out to be douchebags, partly because I'm kind of an asshole. Like, I'm not an asshole to them. Like, I'm always good to my... If people are good to me, I'm good to them. You know what I mean? I'm never addicted to anybody else. And I should probably do things to people just to kind of put them in their place, but that's not my place to do it. What I'm what I'm basically saying is, is, like, there's a difference between being alone and lonely. And, um... I don't know. I just... I just make particular decisions that I think work well for me and it might not work for other people. Like I like certain shows that other people might not like. Like if you guys haven't seen the show Awake, here's the situation with the show Awake. Awake is an amazing television show and it talks about for partly the reason why I like it cuz I'm a daydreamer. I've always been a daydreamer. And it's not a good quality but like I'm always I'm always kind of walking around in my own zone. Like um you guys ever heard the Devin the Dude song? Who is it? The Dude, you know? Like, solo person, but is social, but is with other people, right? And I don't know. I don't like... The reason why I don't do that is because I don't like depending on other people. I don't like doing that. I always, you know... And I... But the weird thing is I like a lot of people depend on me. You know what I mean? Like, I take care of a lot of people. But... uh you know, maybe it was because of the way I was raised, where I was the only, you know? And I think it's really funny, like, you know, when I go only, 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 it's just like, it's just me. I always run solo. Like, a lot of times, like, you know, I get on Xbox or whatever, and people want to invite them. It's like, let me just do my thing. Let me be in my own zone. Like, a lot of times I get in the lobbies and fans scream, and it's just like, <sighs> I still to this day don't like, I don't like, like, people that are fans of mine screaming in lobbies, but that's whatever, like, I asked for it, and I understand that, you know, you guys want to just talk to me, but, like, I just kind of want to be in my own zone, and I kind of want to figure, I want to figure life out on my own, does that make sense? I never want to give people advice, like, I, I remember I was talking about doing, like, an advice column or whatever, and just, like, I don't think I should give advice to anybody, because I'm still figuring it out. And I think that's pompous and kind of douchey of people to kind of give advice. I can give you my own personal insight on stuff. And if you, like, let's say you're dealing with something and, you know, and you and you hear me kind of talk about it, that's, that's cool. You know what I mean? Like, if you can hear my point of view or if I can get into your brain and ticker your brain spine and, and you're able to maybe make a better decision, that's cool. But I never want to, like give advice or claim anything as fact just for this mere fact, man is like, I'm still trying to figure it out. And, um, that's pretty much it. Like I'm still trying to figure life out. Um, one thing that I have come to conclusion of, and this is more so just more kind of like a a channel update or let you know, um, I'm not enjoying playing the game of call of duty right now. I love Call of Duty. I know I'm going to come back to it. But I'm going to take a little bit of a break. So that's going to be... What that means is there's going to be San Andreas and there's going to be Max Payne 3. I'm going to give Max Payne 3 a try. I don't know how well of a playthrough that's going to be. But I'm going to live stream it. And, uh, you know, maybe... And then the second thing is I need to work out, guys. I need to be healthier. Like, going out, getting drunk, and then vegging out on the couch all day. It's just, It's just not... It's not a good look, it's not healthy, and it's not making me happy. So while I try to figure out this mystery of life, I I know a couple things. I need to be healthier, and I need to kind of lay off the Call of Duty because it's just unhealthy to my soul. Only to be played, Sunny Show Commentary. Peace. Butterfly Effect is a movie, um, well, let's start off from the beginning, so, I'm sitting at home, and I'm watching, I actually ended up watching this other movie, this movie, uh, with Steve Carell in it, where he gets divorced from the girl from Boogie Nights, uh, Julianne Moore, and it was actually a really good movie, and, like, I don't know, uh, call me gay or whatever, but, um, 
what's his name dresses pretty sharp in the movie and I I think I'm gonna start kind of like gradually moving in that direction of just dressing GQ and nice and not you know Jordan sweats and even though I love my JLs but uh you know I, I think I'm gonna gravitate that way anyways as I'm watching the movie I'm really really like I'm, I'm I just enjoyed it even though I guess it kind of could have been a chick flick but I don't like not watch a movie because it's considered a chick flick. You know what I mean? Like, I watch what a movie if it's good. I don't give a fuck. Like, I will listen to music even if it's from a genre I don't like. Ooh, no. But uh, I'm sitting there, and you know how you write out like a text message, and then you get that little opportunity kind of to send it. And I'm just like, do I want to send this out? Do I want to send it out? And I'm like, no. <laughs> delete the whole thing start start typing again delete it and I'm just like and I do that with with YouTube videos sometimes guys like sometimes I'll do a whole YouTube video and then I'll, I'll, I'll watch it and I'll be like I'll be all ready to upload it and then I'll just kind of sit there and I'll be like should I put this up and like I'm talking like I've worked like two three hours on a video that I, I, I end up not putting up so go figure I don't know anyways so I'm Wanted to send this text message, but then I, I go, I, I don't, I need to stop worrying about uh, how I will be perceived and and just say what's on my mind. Because, like, whenever I just say what's on my mind, people people tend to like it more than when I, I worry or if I, I constantly don't or if I, I just, like, I just want to go. <laughs> I've talked about this before with the whole silence thing. Silence is fucking golden. Anyways, um... But I don't send it. So whatever interesting, possibly life-changing, anything, whatever, that was in that text message is never going to be seen, right? And I always find that interesting, like, the, the idea that shit's not, like, you know, great, grandeur things are never, are, are just deleted, you know? You know that Stephen King could probably write a book, write out the most amazing book in the world, and then if he wants to, you can just delete it, bam. And that's crazy to me. In the movie The Butterfly Effect, I'm going to link you to a video that talks about the actual idea of The Butterfly Effect. And I'm going to ruin The Butterfly Effect movie for you. So if you have not seen it, I suggest you stop watching this. Or if you don't care, it doesn't matter. I don't know. But basically, The Butterfly Effect is this. Uh, the flap of a butterfly's wings could potentially cause a hurricane on the other side of the world. And the reasoning behind that, and it's true, is I'll give you a prime example. Let's say you met your soulmate at a coffee shop. You met her at a coffee shop while you're standing in line for coffee. You meet her and you end up spending the rest of your life with her. From that one point, the initial meetup from that one point. Think, think, about, think about key people in your life. And where you've met them. If this is outside of school. Most most people that are young when they're in school, they get it from that. But I'm talking about, think about it from a point of view of, you know, where did you meet this person? Where did you find this thing? Or where did you come across this? Or whatever. A lot of times, it's from very, very precise moments in crossing paths in life, right? So, let's go back to the idea of you meeting your soulmate. Okay, let's or or the person that you end up spending the rest of your life with. Let's say you met him at a coffee shop, right? Now, before this instance, let's say that you were sitting at a, a stoplight. Oh no! I perfect, perfect. I just came up with this. Perfect. Let's say you're driving, and it reaches that point when the light goes yellow, and you have to make a decision: Do I slam on my brakes? Or do I keep going? Now, in the instance where you keep on going, you end up pulling off the side, go to get your morning coffee or whatever, meet the, the girl or dude of your dreams, depending on whatever's, and everything's great. And then, you know, fast forward through life, and now you've lived your life with this person. Now, let's go back to that point when you're driving through that light, and you go, you know what? Fuck it. Slamming your brakes. So now you're at a red light and you're sitting there for a while. And then you drive and you go to that coffee shop and, you know, 
you didn't meet. Now, in the movie, The Butterfly Effect, there is this introduction of uh, fate. Faith. Faith. Faith? Fate. Fate. I'm sorry. Fate. There's an introduction of fate. Because I think that if we were to use that same scenario when we're talking about the butterfly, you know, when using that same scenario about, you know, meeting your, your, your future wife at like a coffee shop. The idea that I used was just that that small change, that small change in the order of, of operations caused you not to meet your wife, right? But the idea of fate is that maybe you didn't meet her or maybe she was getting coffee and she left and you held the door open for her and made contact and then you guys still got together. See what I'm saying? In the movie The Butterfly Effect, Basically, what happens is he goes and uh, he lives his life through, you know, 21 years and shit's pretty fucked up. Like, shit just isn't the way it is. And he, by reminiscing through old books, he's able to, that he's written when he was going through, like, these blackout periods. He is able to go back in time, change that one thing, and then it drastically, it drastically changes everything. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I think that's why, first off, time travel just doesn't happen. It's just not within the realm of things. It's interesting to a person like me. I, I fucking totally dig the idea of time traveling and the idea of going back and changing things or having knowledge of the previous. But the problem with it is you can't just change one thing. It's not like you just are going to just take one thing from it and it's not going to affect everything else. So there's... Anyway, so in the movie The Butterfly Effect, he first goes through it, and then he goes back to when he was like seven, and then he changes one thing, and everything's perfect, but then it's not, and what basically happens is that he plays out this entire cycle of events in his, in his well, no, I don't want to say in his head, because that's what it kind of is, but like, he plays out all these events that he's going through. Now, when he... What happens, though, and obviously this is a movie and there's artistic merit to it or whatever, but what happens, though, is that he realizes that the idea of, of, of fate plays such a, a big role in it that even though he's able to, you know, knowing what he needs to do, knowing that he has the game changers and that he could do, you know, he, he knows the outcomes of his actions and this and that, no matter what, every time the girl that he is infatuated with always ends up um, basically being unhappy and he was able to see it in one situation where he wasn't part of the girl's life and was able to and was able to realize that you know he did his that him being around wasn't gonna make her happy the the butterfly effect is that I, I truly believe that the butterfly effect the 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 <laughs> It needs to be in like the love category because it's it's a fucking it's honestly it's a love story. Now uh, the director's cut and the theatrical cut are a little different, and the reason why I say that is because that well they are. I like the director's cut better because in the director's cut what he does is he goes back to when he was um, he goes back to when he was a baby, right, and just. And then chokes himself with the umbilical cord, and they and they reference that in the movie a couple times, like when she was talking about how she was a smoker or whatever, and the doctor says that you know she's had uh, they called they called Ashton Kutcher's character a miracle baby because she's had three miscarriages, and that's some that's some crazy shit if you think about it. That means that this whole scenario of a person living his life out and with the ability to restart it or reconfigure it, they found out that it was better not to live at all with that power. So basically, like, they lived their life three times within this dream world, but then they said, no, okay, it's actually better that I didn't make a stance here. It actually, like, think about that. Like, if you had the ability to redo life and try to have, like, a perfect run of life so many times, then you actually rage quit life and that to me is kind of crazy that's kind of crazy to me and it's kind of 
Like that's why I, I, that movie is so deep and on so many different levels. That's why I really, really like it. And the same kind of idea where all that could happen. Like think about that. Think about the brain hemorrhaging you would have if you were to live three lifetimes and then at the end of it go, you know what, this this wasn't a good idea and to go back to the start and just go bloop, delete, no more. Think about that for a second. And that's what, honestly, I know, like, I don't want to say this is a bad thing, but, like, that's, that whole scene, that whole sequence that I just described, described to you, that goes through my head every single time I make a simple text message. So, I mean, that that's kind of like a heavy thought provoking thing that I constantly go for go through and I think the reason why I self-medicate with um, you know with drinking and, and party and stuff like that is because like I said before my mind works so fucking crazy that it just needs it just needs a moment to fucking chill the fuck out because that because that whole that whole scene the whole situation I described right there that is that goes through my mind all the time. Like I've literally had like deep, long thoughts that basically go to the point where me go, you know what? I don't even want to fucking share this. And that's the interesting with thing with the YouTube thing, guys. Like I have no issue fucking letting you know what is on my mind. I have no issue talking to you guys like this, but in like, what I call the real world, because I still consider this YouTube thing like it's, it's 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 still a joke to me, and I, it always will be. Like everyone that takes it super seriously, do you? But like, it's 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 the internet, it's YouTube. Like, come on, bro. And so I have no issue sharing that stuff with you. Now, I've talked about the Peter Pan syndrome before. Well, with the thing with Peter Pan syndrome and the thing with the butterfly effect is, yeah, like, I, because of my fear of death and because of, you know, wanting to always, like, I'm talking about bear grip onto the, the fact of, of being a, a kid forever, which is honestly, like, what I would like to do. Like, I don't want to get old. I, I want to I want to be forever young, you know what I mean? That's just what what just seems natural to me and then just what I want to do. Um the problem is if I want to be forever young, I need to actually take care of myself in the physical form. We all know I'm, I'm fucking fat. Like I fucking sit at home and play Call of Duty and I drink too much. So, and I party too much. And every other day I'm hungover, and it's kind of ironic because I want to live forever, but I'm taking, not only am I taking recovery days, but I'm probably taking days off the end result. So, the idea of the butterfly effect, where you can, by making one small change, it can be drastic, I'm not even, I haven't even flapped the wings yet, man. See what I'm saying? Like, I haven't even flapped the wings yet. And so, and also, I've been too, I've been not taking care of myself physically, and I haven't been, like, taking care, I've been too social, you know what I mean? Like, I, I've, I've been too worried about doing social things when I need to worry about taking care of myself. So, like, I need to get fit. I need to take certain vices out of my life, and I think it's time for me to flap my wings in a sense. Does that make, does that compute? Because, um, you know, I want to live forever, but I'm definitely not going to live forever at the current, basically the current formula that I got is, is, is not working, and I don't feel healthy, and I don't feel good, and... Uh, I love the people around me, but I think I need to be, I need to be a little selfish. You know what I'm saying? I've always thought about that though, guys. Like whenever someone, like, let's say someone's like 
like learns about me or, or meets me for the first time and I, I go through the whole process of telling him what I do. I can't be there when they listen to a commentary. The worst possible idea would be to have me and um, would would for someone to come in here after I do this commentary and they're like, what are you, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I just did a commentary for my channel. And they're like, can I listen to it? I was like, sure you can. Uh, I can't be here. I can't be in the same room with you while you listen, because I'm able to to differentiate the YouTube the YouTube world and the real world. And I, I think that a lot of people blur that too much. But the same way that I'm holding on to wanting to be a child or wanting to be forever young or whatever. I'm holding on to that so tough in the same way that I'm holding on to the idea of keeping YouTube and real life separate. Even though I tend to bring a lot of the real life into my YouTube, um, I just think it, it, it's for, it's a healthier, it's, it's a point of reference and it's just, it's just better that way. And whenever I talk about how I do things or, or whatever, that's not saying that it's the right way. It's just the way that I do it. Um, my personal stances on stuff shouldn't affect, you know, you. I I think that there there there's this weird thing. I think I'm gonna make a commentary about this as well. But uh, there's this there's this really odd thing where I don't like the idea of being a role model because I'm not. Uh, I don't want anybody to. Like when I'm talking to young kids, and, and like I, I was playing basketball with this with this young kid today, and you could tell that person was looking for like a role model or, or, or a big brother or something, and uh, I don't know if I want to be that to somebody because you know it sucks when you find out that the people that you idolize. I hate to use that word, but you know, it sucks when you the people that you look up to. Or, or, you know, think are amazing. And then when you finally meet them, you go, wow, that's not the person that I was expecting. So, only use me blade. That was a long Sunday chill commentary. I haven't done one in a while. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Go ahead and uh, flap your wings there. Peace and butt grease. I promise San Andreas. What's up guys, only as you blade, send a chill commentary, of course I only give these to you when I think they're good videos or when they're chill, and I'm going to have a little chill little session going on. Man, um, I, I, I was starting to do the commentary and I was like, nah, 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 not quite chill enough and it's Breaking Bad, the new Sunday schedule, for some reason they seem to show really good shows on Sunday. For me, right now, it's Breaking Bad and Newsroom. Newsroom is exceptional. It really is a good show. But when I watch it, I feel like those dudes are too smart. Like, shut up. Like, can you... I feel like the, the talking that they do in that show, they can do it a lot. They can spread it out, smooth it out a little bit. Or if they did the same amount of talking or same amount of what they said. It's everything so quick. It's just like, don't they ever take a moment to be like, whoa, wait, what? What? Huh? I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just my... My laid back dumbness, but whatever. Um, a lot of people always go, they're like, you know, don't ever change, bro. And I'm just like, normally I, I get that. I, I I understand that. Like I understand the that we like the character. You know, I've always talked about the characters in our life. We like the characters in our life to be. I don't want to say predictable, but I I like the fact that I don't need to kind of decipher or figure out where they're coming from or what what's on their mind or, or whatever I don't I feel like I don't need to process like the people in my life I tend to make it so that I don't have to process them does that make sense you know what I mean like I don't need to go what's really going on with you bro like I don't really have I don't feel like I have the need to to do that but at the same time like um life everyone's life is is a book you know what I mean like uh if you watch like old 
like MTV music channel or whatever, and you see like these soul singers, you see a dude, and he might be 30, back in like 1980, jamming out on a guitar, and that's just where he was at that juncture in his life, you know what I mean? Like things that you're discovering, people discover that shit 80 years ago. So we're all at different points in our life, and I think that as we... You know, as the director or as the cast of people that we have in our life, we, you know, the the problem is, is we need to realize that some people are at different different parts of the book. You know what I mean? And you know that elitist attitude where you get where if you're reading a book at the same or someone's saying, "Hey, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna get into this show or I'm gonna get into this book," and you're and you've already read them, you're like, "Okay, yeah, I went down that road. You're gonna enjoy it too, but just know that I've I already know that." And somehow we feel better like if you've watched an entire show like let's say like i've you know i've seen the movie scarface a hundred two hundred times you know what i mean i love that movie i love that movie not for the gangster part of it but i just love that movie for a lot of other reasons brian de palma is my favorite director but i've seen the movie you know and then someone might not have seen the movie yet and i just feel like okay it's time for you to kind of go it's time for you to kind of go there you know what i mean and it's interesting because what we're really doing is we're comparing trips that we've taken, you know, and that's more sizing people up for do they have a proper perspective on it. I think like when you, when you go to like uh, when you go to to shindigs or parties or, or or weddings or whatever, a lot of times what you're doing is you're showing off your your thoughts or your perspective or your travels, your insight on things. And I find that what happens is that a lot of people want to be in their comfort zone to to make sure that the people that they're around have similar experiences. Because you, you kind of want someone that's kind of on your same level. And I totally get that. But I'm wondering, like, let's say in like a, you know, I've seen people, like I've gotten really drunk. And then people are just like, Riz, you're fucking awesome. Like, don't ever change. Like I said before. But I'm also thinking, like, is that... I, and this isn't probably what they're what they're getting at, but I'm saying like one out of ten people they actually get this subconsciously. And it's like, is that you wanting me to be how I am right now? Because you're at this part of your life right now, and you feel that me would be would make for an awesome character in this part. Like, are you do you really want to be my friend, or do you see me as this amazing? you know, character in your story. See what I'm saying? Like, do we, do we cast people as amazing characters in our story or do we actually cast them as actual real friends? And do the people that say don't ever change, does that, is that them saying, Hey, I'm not growing and I want you to not grow with me so I can have someone to not grow with, you know, like I, I've kind of gone through that because, like, I'm, I've am i talked about this, Peter Pan syndrome and me not wanting to grow up and not wanting to, like, which is a scary thing because, like, I want to evolve, but I don't feel like I have the tools in order to grow up quite yet. Or I do have the tools, but I just don't want to use them kind of thing. And I see that some people are comfortable with that. And some people want you to kind of stay at that level because it's easy. It's someone that you can always go to. I've seen it with a lot of my friends, like a lot of my friends are getting, you know, they're getting married and having kids, you know, and for 10% of the time, they kind of look at me and kind of look at my lifestyle and they're just like, damn Riz, like I really wish I could have that. But that's one of those things where if you get like a, you kind of see like the positive things that, you know, of me being a single dude or whatever, but then I'm trying to aspire to be them in a way, you know what I mean? Like I would love to have, I would love to have like a wife and kids and to be able to like support them and be able to like raise, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of a selfish thing. Like I said this before, like with people having kids, people having children is probably the most selfish thing you could possibly do. Like you think that you're so amazing that you want another one of you, you know, you want, so that, that there's that, but also at the same time, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, well, you don't really get to dictate that part of it. Like we can go out, we can have fun. We can fucking, you know, 
there like the relationship or the 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 camaraderie or whatever between me as a cast character that's cool but like i'm never gonna be you know your kid see what i'm saying i'm never gonna be a family member and that's one of the one of the weird parts is like you know with friends if they do enough stupid shit we're just like you know what we don't i don't even want you as a friend anymore because like I, I wanted you as a friend at that point because that's the point when i was starting to evolve and then once it start to evolve i evolve away from you so you know don't ever change but is that don't ever change like don't evolve because the you know the position in my life is where i would like you at as a selfish person or it's don't ever change as far as being truthful for yourself i've been uh looking up like the stuff about machiavelli where he you know tupac obviously kind of made it you know brought it back into the foresight or whatever but basically the main part of machiavelli was that he faked his own death i'm not faking my own death don't worry <laughs> and he uh, to escape his foes and it's like what makes a person say you know what i'm gonna stop what i'm doing right now because i'm be doing me for so long but something needs to change and i'm just gonna do a complete change it's kind of like do i want to fix the car or do i want to or do i want to just say fuck it and get a new car you know kind of thing like do do i evolve like you know obviously we, we want to constantly evolve someone asked me about tattoos um they're like riz when are you gonna get more tattoos and i'm 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 not, I'm just personally not into tattoos. The reason why is because, like, I'm constantly evolving. And so, why would I put something on me that could possibly change in five years? You know what I mean? Like, I could have a completely different outlook or different anything about that, and I want that. I got tattoos on my arm uh, that say Italian pride, and I want to get them removed. It's shit work, and it's just like, why do I need a tattoo something that says I'm Italian? I know I'm fucking Italian you know like whatever so do we evolve or do like would I rather just slowly sink or would I rather power through it and swim away from the shipwreck it's kind of the place I'm at right now um, and I think that evolving is is harder but it's the thing that kind of needs to happen so even though I'm always going to be me the core of me I think other things in me have to change and there's going to be some people who say fuck you I remember the old you but it's like no it's still me it's just me evolving so only you blade that is your Sunday chill commentary hope you guys enjoyed it peace What's up guys, Only Using Blade, a little Sunday chill commentary for you, and let me kind of quick, I know it's not about the gameplay, but let me kind of explain, let me let me tell you why I'm playing the MW2, um, obviously this time of year with the whole new game coming out, we're tired of the previous one, I've been doing the RTC, um, I love me some COD 4, but I don't know if it translates well, you know, I've actually been getting into shooting on the Call of Duty 4, and anyways, so I saw this game, Modern Warfare 2, brand new, for like 20 something bucks and it came with map packs and I was like that's fucking awesome and I always thought it's so funny because we pay for things because of time like a lot of, a lot of things values are based off of time i.e. I saw Inception in theaters for like however much money it was to see an IMAX 3D now I see it on Blu-ray for like five bucks in the bargain bin only the same movie, only thing that's changed is time, you know. Um, we'll give you another example like, you know, that there's people paying a lot of money for Black Ops 2, and they but they're paying for it to get it early, and it's just like, and a lot of people say, Hey, that's a little silly, they make fun of them for it, they're like, That's really silly, you know. <laughs> In two weeks or whatever long the game's coming out, you're able to go to the store and buy it for like 60 bucks. So it's really silly for you to try to buy it early. And the same kind of idea, it's like, you know, at one point, someone probably paid several hundred dollars for this game. But now you can buy it for 30 bucks. You know what I mean? The only thing is, the only thing has changed, the same information, same disc, only thing that's changed is time. 
And I'm going to kind of explain to you that sometimes we misvalue that, but sometimes it is actually worth it. Now, I'm going to tell you right now that I got Modern Warfare 3 early. And that sucks, Thunder. I got Modern Warfare 3 early, and a lot of people would be like, ha ha, don't you feel like a jerk for that? And a lot of people, their initial reactions are like, hey, you know, that's cool because you're a commentator. And so that's, that's what's worth it. But I think that even without being a commentator, I still think it would have been worth it. <clears throat> and the reason why I say that is because forget YouTube for a minute. Um, just forget all that. Forget being a commentator. Forget me doing only use me blade and all that kind of stuff. As far as getting on Call of Duty and playing, I love it. I love the sounds. I love the atmosphere. Now the games, and so what I'm talking about as far as like playing the game early, is YouTube has ruined Call of Duty for the most part. But it hasn't ruined the game. What it's done is it's it's ruined its time. The amount of time where the game is fun. Each year the shelf life for Call of Duty gets shorter and shorter. And you and YouTube's to blame for that. Because people that don't actually like the game, that don't actually enjoy the game, see it as a way to make money. Now, I know it's going to sound hypocritical because playing Call of Duty is my job, but I look at it like this. I was doing this for free. I like doing this. And... I'm able to I'm able to make my hobby or my love or my passion my job. And that's a beautiful thing. That actually helps your soul when something that you enjoy doing and you get paid for it, that's cool. But honestly, most people that that really go after it, you know, you could tell in their voices that they don't enjoy Call of Duty. I actually enjoy Call of Duty. I enjoy the sounds. I enjoy when I get in Call of Duty 4, I'm hearing grenades going off. I'm hearing sniper rifles battling back and forth, and I'm hearing the little pitter patter of fucking MP5 silenced ammo going off. When we play this game, a little bit different. We hear the flunk flunk of grenade launchers, and you know, not as memorable, but whatever. Like that's still there. So, <clears throat> if someone says, "Hey, you getting Black Ops too early?" You know, what the hell? And also, I, I find it really funny that a lot of times people want that for the prestigious aspect of it. Because there is a, there's a little bit of feeling going, wow, this is pretty cool. You know, that I'm <clears throat> kind of the same way when people get on YouTube comments and they go, oh, first or under 300 clubs. that They, they feel this, they're in this prestigious area. Or if they're, in the, if they're playing in lobbies before the game comes out, they feel like they're in this prestigious point. I used to work at Best Buy, right? And we used to open up new stores. And every store opening that we had, there would be a dude there, and he would travel across the country. Like he was retired, he, had, he apparently he's well off on money, but he would travel across the country and he'd go to stores, and he would try to be the first purchase at the stores. He'd try to be like, so we'd open up the store, literally, we'd open the doors, people would come in, he'd go straight to the cash register, he'd go straight to the registers, grab like a fucking like a Snickers bar or something, and buy it. And he wants to be prestigious. He wants to feel that he's the first person. And I was talking to the the actual store manager, or not the store manager, like like one of the company managers, the higher ups. And I'm like, doesn't he know? Now what we used to do is we used to have what's called soft openings. Now with soft openings, the way it works is like we would build the store up, and then we would have like friends and family come and shop in the store on like. A Tuesday or something like that, you know? And so they come in, and then that way, all the people in the store that work there understand what it's like to actually have actual customers come in, right? And so we would actually sell a bunch of shit. And so when this dude comes in on the, on the, on the official store opening, and he's buying something, and he's thinking he's the first, he's not. People have already been there. People have already bought and stuff. So even the people that, like, think it's all special... To be like the first person, like to be in that group of the first people to play, the developer has been playing the game for like a year. So I don't know, just kind of something to think about. But also at the same time, like I watched this uh, this movie. Um, it's not even a good movie. 
And I hate I hate when I end up watching movies that I know aren't good movies, but every time they're on TV, I have to watch them. Like Horrible Bosses is funny, but it's not that great of a movie. But every time it's on, I'm like, okay, I start to watch it, you know. But this movie that I end up watching when I kind of had these thoughts for the Sunday Chill commentary was For the Love of the Game, right? And it's a Kevin Costner movie about baseball. And kind of the way it works is, you know, he has his love with his with his wife or whatever, but he really is um, he's really just a person that is just alone, but he feels that when he does his pitching for his baseball, he is in control of everything in this environment. Cause really Call of Duty when you think about it is just it's it's like this graphic it's this scenario situation where if things are going your right and you're in control of it, it feels like you have control of a world. And it's fucking great. It really is. So I get a little frustrated sometimes when I see people that don't actually like the game playing it just for monetary means. Sorry, I never talk about money or whatever. But I honestly love the game of Call of Duty. So, like, if I wasn't so lazy and didn't not go about it so that I can get the game early and not even just to fucking make that YouTube money. If I would have got the game earlier, it would have prolonged that empty gym feeling. When I was when I was a young kid and I used to go practice basketball, there was something about being in a gym and the sounds of my shoes on the floor and the basketball hitting and it's empty. There's something about that that's like peaceful and serene. And even though Call of Duty's there's craziness there is like this melodic John Woo violence calming that you get. So getting the game early to have that experience, I think it might be worth it. Peace. All right. So obviously before I upload a video, I like to listen to it. And there is just this one thing I wanted to, just to, to touch on. And that was... I really wanted to strive for that whole alone thing because I am, I am, I'm not lonely. I am alone though. And it does give me solace to be in control of this virtual world. It does give me power to be in the zone when I'm playing basketball back in the day. And I need to get back into that because that's probably healthier than playing Call of Duty all day. That doesn't mean I don't understand that other people are aware of my journey of life, you know? And during that game, during the game, during the movie, for the love of the game, Kevin Costner, he's pitching, he's doing a perfect game, and he's going through so many things, and even though he's disconnected from his teammates, and he's disconnected from the crowd and stuff like that, there's certain points where he does actually need help from his his friends, or his his co, his his buddies, his pals, his friends, his 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 solidarity there you know what I mean so even though those guys might not be turtle and e and drama from entourage like best buds like that there are still people that realize that this person's on that journey is something special and sometimes you need to give them a pick me up and I don't know why but I just felt like that needed to be kind of shared from a person that is a an alone person a person that does things solely when sometimes when it's appropriate even though we're all on our own separate paths, it's a, it's awesome to give a helping hand or to realize, hey, grab the person's arm, bring him back on the right pathway. So, hope you guys don't mind this little still image. Always a blade. That is your Sunday chill commentary. Peace and butt grease. What's up, guys? Uh, this is the first Sunday Chill commentary I've done for the for the Black Ops 2. Um, if you guys have never seen this, let me quickly explain, and then we'll go on this ride. Um, Sunday Chill commentaries is just a, a laid-back, chill, reflective commentary that I like to do, um, typically on Sundays, because I believe Sundays have a different feel. Um, gameplay doesn't really even matter. It's just there to look at. I, I knife people. <sighs> Man, I finally have gotten, I finally relaxed, I finally mellowed the fuck out, 
and it kind of took a while, but it's just more of a realization that I need to, you know, one thing that you always want to do is you always want to kind of worry about yourself, you know, and I decided to sit my ass down on the couch and watch one of the movies that I had. And it's funny, like, let's say you go to the store, and I used to have a huge movie collection, and I've talked about movies before. Don't worry, this isn't going to be about the butterfly effect. This is going to be about the movie A Bronx Tale. And in the movie The Bronx Tale, it kind of deals with a lot of things that... I don't know, it, 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 it applies to everyone. And one thing that I've always loved about The Bronx Tale is, like, the music and the cars and the scenery and stuff like that. But also, when... What it's doing is that it's telling a story that happens, and then once you watch it, you realize that the way that they have it set up, where it's in the beginning, you know, on this block in New York or whatever, there's some, you know, a group of dudes, and they're and they're like, um, they're singers, and they're singing just some like, you know, I don't know, what do you call it, like. Not bebop. I don't know how to what what the exact wording for it, but you know they're like the people on the street singing around like a camp, not campfire, but like a, a burning barrel to keep warm because they're cold outside. And the movie ends with that same thing, and you, and then he says something about you know this is you know of all these things that have happened, you just got to realize that this is just a Bronx tale. This is just a tale, a story, whatever. And I've realized that. You know, life is a bunch of short stories or tales or whatever. Like, I found that, you know, some of my experiences... Like, you ever watched a movie and you are not feeling it? Like, you're just like, mm-mm, I'm not feeling it. And someone else that's with you just was, com- com- like, completely engrossed by it. It's like, were you watching the same movie? And I think that, you know... A movie is just a segment of a story or whatever, and I think that good stories trump everything else. See what I'm saying? Like, a movie that has, like, amazing special effects, eventually, ten years down the line, we're going to look at that movie like, why did we like that shit? You know what I mean? Like, any, mo- any like, action movie now, like, what like what are the current, like, uh, like a tra- the Transformers series, right? It's supposed to be the most high tech, digital, crazy, mind blowing experience, whatever, right? When we watch, when we watch that in thirty, forty years, we're gonna be like, "This is looks like crap." You know what I mean? So, if you watch like any like the original Star Wars, you might watch and be like, "Oh, this is this is this is cool," but like it looks so fake compared to what it was before. I don't know. But the reason why I'm even bringing that up is that a good story or a good movie is timeless. A really good movie is timeless. Now, there's going to be stories or friendships or relationships or whatever that you have that might be action-packed, but it wasn't really a good movie. And over time, you you kind of start to realize that. See what I'm saying? Like, I always look at people, I've said this before, I look at, at people, if I look at my entire life, if someone make an entire life in my movie, I I look at people as characters in my movie. I know that sounds very self-centered, but just that's just the way that I look at. It. I look at like a person is a character in the movie in my movie of life, you know? And sometimes I know it sounds really fucked up, but like sometimes I will when meeting a friend or a female for companionship or whatever, I will literally think of if I was making that movie of life and I can cast anybody Obviously, I'm, you know, to, but to play her role, who would, who would I have play her role? You know what I mean? And, like, this one girl that I knew at one point, I swear to God, she had this, like, Daria vibe to her. And so, I always thought, and this is really funny, though, because, like, in, as I cast the characters in my life in, like, a remake of a movie of my life or whatever... I would cast Daria, the cartoon character, because I don't know, maybe like Janine Garofalo or something like that would be the adult, would be the human character, but like, I just always thought it would be funny to be like, her part would be a cartoon, and I don't think any movie has ever done that, I don't think any movie has been a serious movie, and just one of the characters in it was just a cartoon character, and no one said shit, that would be amazing, think about that, think about being a movie director, and just inserting 
a, a cartoon character in your movie and having it all edited edited in, right? And then having the balls be like, and not even like, not even say anything about it. Like, you know how people talk about the elephant in the room or whatever? What if you never mention the elephant? I don't know. I just think that would be hilarious. But during the Bronx Tale, don't worry, there's no spoilers I'm going to give you. But like during the Bronx Tale, it kind of dealt with being young and having conflicting advice from people. And you kind of want them to go, it's really tough though because if you have one person in your life telling you, trying to give you advice on something and they're going, hey, you're, you know, you're young, just listen to me, it all makes sense later. And I, 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 that's so true because stuff that I knew when I was 16 and like my, my family or whatever would be like, this will make sense when you get older and now it makes sense. But that's like that faith, blind faith that I don't really buy into, sort of. So a lot of times I live life trial and error. So, conflicting, um, conflicting advice. And then it's also weird because what happens when you have conflicting advice, you literally have to judge the people that are giving advice. Are you giving this person advice for your own benefit? What's the reason for this? Maybe you're uneducated in the matter that we're talking about. It's really weird. You have to you have to play like this judging person when the person that's giving you the advice is, is literally just trying to help you out. Both Sonny and De Niro's character in Bronx Tale wanted the best for C, okay? Wanted the absolute best for him, but they just went at it different ways. And I always find it interesting when, like, there's a role model or a character that someone will look up to, right? Because it reaches a point when C really 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 looks up to Sonny and there's a point when Sonny kind of realizes he's like you know what dude uh I understand like I'm giving you advice because I see a lot of me and you but also at the same time it'd be beautiful if you didn't make the mistakes I made I don't want you to live my life even though the the part of my life that you see is is something that you like that's because you only see me a little bit of me you don't you don't actually live it you don't actually do it so like a lot of like a lot of people like a lot of like i don't want to say movie stars but like let's say call them like rap stars or something like that they're like i don't want to be a role model because the way basically when people want to say hey i wish that i would have approached this differently and then other people want to mimic what they're doing they're like no 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 don't be me be you so they kind of it's a very fine line. It's like, don't try to replicate someone, but if you can take advice or life lessons from people, just take just take the good ones that, that apply, that allow you to be a better person, That that's better than looking at someone who has the answers but had to scribble and erase and really, really, really work hard to get to that answer. Does that make sense? It's like, oh, I want to be like you just like you don't understand i messed up so many times take my knowledge but don't repeat my mistakes that's kind of the gist of of, of the movie uh bronx tale it's, it's pretty awesome i'm only to play this has been a sunday chill commentary i don't know what the hell i was talking about but i talked and kind of vibed out and felt like i left you a 10 minute voicemail so peace and butt grease What's up guys, Only As We Blade, and this is your Sunday Chill Commentary, a little uh, Black Ops action, and it serves the backdrop. Um, do we want all the answers? I, I don't think I don't think anybody really wants all the answers, because then it would be boring. Does that kind of make sense? That's almost like the, there's lots of movies like, um, I'm going to ruin, like, turn your speakers down for a little bit. If you haven't seen The Green Mile, The Green Mile, uh, when it's a great movie. When you watch it... And when you really kind of see what the whole the whole point of it is, there's this moment where you realize that Tom Hanks' character is like 150 years old. And he, I, I might be a little off on that number or whatever, but like he's he's really old and he's living in this life and, you, and because of the thing with John Coffey that he's going to basically live forever. And that's like, 
the curse that was dealt through meeting that person or whatever was that now he's in this thing where he lives forever. And if you think about that, that's like, that's, that's an, initially, that's naturally what you would want. But also a lot of people have kind of said, it's like, you don't really want to live forever. Like, I think all good stories um, have endings and it becomes things that get passed along and stories and ideas and thoughts outlive us as humans, you know? But think about that. Like, you were trying to, you know, a lot of times our brain, we, or our, just our perception of stuff, we, we like to think about grand scale huge things, you know what I mean? Like, how many Skittles would fill up the Grand Canyon? Just stupid stuff like that, right? And you think about that, you're like, whoa, that's crazy. And in the whole scheme of things, it's really not because... I watched this thing on YouTube where they talked about how small we really are. Like, it talked about how the, like, if you look at Earth, you can fit, I know I'm going to mess these numbers up, I apologize, but, like, you could fit, like, a million Earths in the sun. And then they kind of scoped back up, and they're like, you know... The sun is just kind of minuscule compared to the universe, and there's so many universes, and when you kind of break it down, just the sun, like, if you look at the size of the sun, you think that's massive, right? It kind of blows your mind. And then, when you really break it down and kind of go far out, as far as all the other universes, the sun is tiny. The sun is like a grain of salt, or a, a, they, they use a, a sand. They use the sand reference where it's like, you know, just a little bit of sand. What is it? Is it a grain of sand? Okay. Um, I look yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's like a the the sun is just a grain of sand, and in the whole scheme of things, it's like a huge beach. Like, and so it really kind of puts in perspective that we, you know, we as humans or we as people like of this earth, we, you know, we get so miscombobulated and so focused on like these little things when there's so much kind of more out there. And do we want to actually know the answer? It's funny because, like, a lot of things that we hope for, like, a lot of times, like, uh, the whole three wishes thing or whatever, every movie that has to deal with, with someone with wishes, every time they get that, they always have this point where that wish kind of backfires on them. And I just kind of think that it's, it's just kind of in our nature. Like, we say that we want, you know people talk about the pursuing of life or whatever and they say that we want certain answers to certain things and but in all honesty I don't think we really do I think we say we do but like if you actually do get that then it's kind of like you know I've talked about this before like now what okay we figure that out and so during our, our little time on earth um, it's best to try to learn as many answers and get as many perspectives on it to form your own knowing that you're not going to answer every single question it'd be nice to answer every single question but i think like if we get to that point we might be kind of going okay now what now what more do we conquer like people talk about like you know like scarface he's talking like the world is mine it's just like well if you were to get the world the other planets would kind of look at you and be like, oh, that's it? That's all you got there, buddy? We got all this, you know? So, it's just kind of a, a crazy, just, just kind of things to kind of think about, just kind of put in perspective, because, you know, I, myself, fall under the problem where I live too much in this world, you know? And a lot of times, people kind of look at me, and they, they talk to me, and they like, they're like, dude, you're bored, and, you know, everyone always has this thing where they don't want to be bored. But also at the same time, it's because I, I feel that I've, I'm in this weird point on my journey where I'm too lazy to, like, go and see all the awesome things in the world, or I don't prioritize it. Like, going to, you know, I'm not even, I haven't even traveled outside the country. It'd be cool to kind of, like, travel and kind of have your brain go, whoa, that's really, you know, that's... That's a surreal experience, you know what I mean? It's the same kind of thing with, with alcohol. Like, alcohol is a poison, right? And you bet, people would be like, dude, alcohol is a poison, and it literally makes you feel differently. And just like, why is there that need to want to feel different than, than just living in the current moment? Because, of, you know, in the whole grand scheme of things, the Earth's a fucking amazing place. It's an awesome place. But, who knows? Only using Blade.
Sunday Show commentary. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And uh, until next time, peace and butt grease.